awesome. What do we got here? Mike, I got a uh, overgrowth print to give away. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what's going on, darling? Hi. Uh, <laughs> struggling to get everything together right now. <laughs> yeah, I've been crazy busy. It's like the story of my life. <clears throat> Which is not a bad thing. It's only a bad thing when I can't time manage, because I'm really bad at that. Because my husband makes jokes that I don't understand time and space. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody in every couple has to have that problem, so. Yep, mm hmm Every time yep. I plan a project, I, uh, I over-plan and under-time. Hey, Anna. Yep. Anna gets a night off. Yay, Anna. You deserved it, Anna. <laughs> yes. Hey, Mystical. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jenga dance. Tell her I'll be right back. Okay, no problem. Yep. Hi, uh, Jenga. Nice crit. <laughs> we got a nice jam session tonight. Alright. Oh, she got the time wrong. No, she's thinking, she's thinking central time. Were well, they're what, two hours behind us, Texas? Are they an hour? I think an hour. I think it's just, yeah, it's an, just hour. an hour. Glad I sent her a message. Time zone problems. All right, let me just start putting out some. Uh, we're here on. Bill, did you catch any of the game yesterday? You were out, right? What, the West Virginia game? No, the. Oh, oh no, the Battle Tech. Tech. No, no, we went, uh, we were at, went to Hershey Park yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, it was busy. We went there for football Friday night at Hershey because it was the first uh, day of Halloween stuff and uh, in laws anniversary today. All I want to say is how about them Lions? <laughs> they lost. <laughs> oh, I know. So you can say that. Oh, it's not a big deal. Hey, Bones. Thanks for the thanks for the thank you both for the resubs. God damn, twenty six months. I know you've known me that long. It's scary. Jesus, that's how long I've been I'm putting up with to, you. Yes. <laughs> See how good the Giants are playing this year. <laughs> yeah, well, they, Sports ball, go team. <laughs> nice. Ah right. uh, ha ha. Hello. Hello hello. Hello. The Beyond the Wall of Worlds. Let me turn hey, Christine. Of time. Hey, Sorry about the time problem. <laughs> it's okay. I was like, you're live now. Should, should we have like a whole other hour? And there is light. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, guys. Smacking it out of the park there. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Troy. Reality is far worse. For a law flirts with tyranny. Chaos invites. Freshly back from Reapercon. Evil consumes oh, all of the Good. <laughs> it's been crazy. Ago. And those in the middle, they are worse, for they know nothing. It feels nothing like we've still self. just got back. The Codex so Infernum and the Codex Exaltum, two source books that bring in-depth knowledge about beings of all dispositions. How are five gifted subs just now from Troy? Heavens, are we only on a level one hype train? That's insane. Both you know, I see a level. Full color Wait, what the hell? One okay, so I have both chats. I have the popped out chat and the chat on the screen. Uh, one says a level one. The other one says a level names, three. Okay. That's, so I don't. That's <laughs> that's the up. truth. Mine these says level one. That is bizarre. Demons and angels, devils. And now, okay, I refreshed it and went to three. Thank you. Thank you, Bones. Thank you, Savage. Thank you, everyone. You're all on your wonderful. Table. Hi, Bones. Hi, little baby. This is, now, this is an important ad from someone who's sitting here, so there's Game Jeremy stuff. 
Hey, Jay, I'm trying to get my other rig set up. I think I just have to update the ZBrush on. All right, take your time, man. You can always call in. You can always have a second zoom in with the, with the sound off on it, so. No, it's fine. I got plenty of computers. I just got to pick one and turn this one around. Troy, why? I mean, I, I'm assuming that red dragon is that red dragon's his, isn't it, uh, darling? Uh huh. Need... I've got both of them sitting right next to me. The, the boy you've been working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This guy. Oh, I hit a wrong button. Yes, an early wrong button. I was going, I was trying to shout out Jeremy, and instead I reset the ad. So uh, that's that. Nice. Right. Yes. Right next to me, Troy. Right next to me. <laughs> I may or may not have a, a tiny miniature gun held point blank at them. <laughs> Holding a dragon sausage. Yeah. Gonna be a fun one. Good here we get the uh, entry screen on. And Anna gets a night off to relax. How yes, Anna gets a night off. off. Imagine that. Well, it looks like our, our show on um, Wednesday night's gonna be a little late. I have back to school night. We'll just start it late. It's not a big deal. So I apologize, darling, for using your old logo. I got the new one into the scroller. Yeah, it's okay. I thought I had sent that to you, you a while you back. You probably did, but I just, you know, uh, uh, I'll admit I'm overwhelmed sometimes. Yeah, I I totally understood. And I missed it when you sent me the initial flyer because I, too, am overwhelmed. <laughs> I think we all are here. If we put our heads together, we could possibly do something right at some point. Not sure, though. <laughs> Still waiting for it to happen. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't put that kind of pressure on us. <laughs> Just one thing. Checking all, checking all shout outs for everyone. They're all good. All right, cool. There it is. Of course it matters. All right, let's come live. All right, it's a Sunday night, and uh, we're going to have another great creative jam session with some unbelievable, talented people here. Don't include me in this because I'm just I'm just the one pressing the buttons tonight. So I'm J.K. Lord Gazamba. Let's introduce everyone. This is our the same group we had about I don't know. It's been a year, like nine months ago. We got to do these more often, but um, this is going to be a really fun discussion. So. Uh, and let's see what everyone has going on and some of the things that uh, interest you. And we got we got some great giveaways tonight, too. So, uh, Darling, uh, kick it off. We'll do ladies first on this one. Awesome. Hello. Hi, I'm Darling Creep Show. I'm just your resident creep on Twitch. I play TTRPGs, and I also paint D&D &D miniatures. And I think that's what I'm here to talk about tonight. I'm pretty pretty sure. I'm also Jay's number one pest. Um. Well, you and or bones. It's a tough. It's a close call, right? So, <laughs> but when you put us together, right, right. Bones, quick! You need to start being creative so we can torture Jay all the time uh, on everything. Uh, absolutely. Because <laughs> I know you guys will take um, evil delight in that, but that's all right. But you guys are going to torture me soon in person a couple months down the road, which is going to be really cool. Yeah, so, that's going to be uh, super fun. Absolutely. I don't think you're ready for that. Uh, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Bill, Bill knows I can ha hold my own on the, uh, with the... Uh, I don't think I'm ready to spend however many hours it takes to paint Myriad green at like 7 in the morning. Oh, that's right. You guys are going to cosplay <laughs> it. Oh my. oh, my. That's it, Jeremy. That looks... There you go. Cool. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, welcome back. And next, welcome back um, a, a wonderful and creative person and some fan with some fantastic uh, new uh, new stuff since the last time we, we saw her. Um, Christine Van Patten, Moonlight Middies. Welcome back. Hello. How, How are, are you? Guys? 
I'm doing great. Uh, we just got back from Rebercon, uh, I guess, two weeks ago now. And it feels like two it days. It feels like two days ago. <laughs> we were. We were prepping for it for months, and we've just been running at a million miles a minute for so long. You know, like when you get off the treadmill after a while and you still feel like the floor is moving? That's, oh, yeah. That's where we're at. <laughs> how um, how did it go overall this it was, year? It was really fantastic. Uh, we taught four different classes. Uh, we tripled our booth space this year, and we did oh, wow. very, very well um, at the booth. And... We got to give away some brand new trophies for the painting competition. Uh, we had a new kids trophy this year, which was really exciting. Awesome. And uh, yeah, now we've got our painting competition that we're hosting. That's going to wrap up on Halloween night. And we'll we'll give away one last trophy for that. Online. And uh, yeah, we have the swatch for that. So we'll share that with everyone because it's open, right? Is that open yeah. to anyone? Yeah. Open to anybody, yeah. So maybe get some people involved here that are uh, that are uh, watching or some of the other crafters. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. So uh, some really great things. Plus, we got a nice uh, store coupon for, for, for Moonlight Middies uh, as well for you all uh, for today. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Looking, forward to, uh, looking forward to the discussion and, uh, and, a, and a fun time here. Um, next, um, Mike. What's going hey, on? Mike not Disney. much. Hey, not much. my name is Mike Disney, and uh, I do miniature painting here on Twitch. I do uh, some digital artwork and some illustration and some canvas painting from time to time. Um, and that's, that's pretty much my, my whole thing. I do do commissions and, uh, we have a convention coming up this weekend, um, which is, uh, going to be pretty cool. And, uh, that's about it. Well, we, and we have a lot of gaming going on, uh, with, uh, where you're playing with a whole bunch of different people we're rotating in and that's been a blast. So we'll keep that rolling. Right. Right. With you, absolutely with, with, with scarn and the racks also part of the giveaways uh hingvar that's my man mike first time chatter so um <laughs> awesome to see uh and, uh, hey please always uh shout out your your favorites here we're, hey we're halloran that. we're going to give away one of these too in part of the giveaways so actually we point drawing a, a signed mike disney overgrown print okay we have that as well uh jeremy's doing stuff uh getting this thing set up can they hear it can we hear oh, you yeah. <laughs> there he is uh, i'm it, almost there it, introduce yourself real quick um jeremy i run gamescape 3d uh been doing that for uh six or seven years now and uh that's about it yeah, that's that, not I about it, out. man. <laughs> You're a one-man wrecking crew when it comes to the 3D printing world, right, Bill? I mean, um, my gosh, the stuff, the stuff that yeah. we use on the table, if you've seen our tables the last two months, has been unbelievable. Even the Battletech uh, game yesterday, that was some un you know, unbelievable stuff, and it's all Jeremy's for the most part, with all the, you know some other companies thrown in, but uh, I got some pics to show you all if you haven't seen it. So, uh, and uh, I guess uh, I can mention I run a makerspace at uh, Murray State University. Uh, I like to tell people I do that for health insurance, and then I do this for money. Uh, and That's I awesome. don't have very good health insurance or very good money. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> a little surprise for you, darling. Uh, Jeremy will be at GaryCon as well. Yeah. Oh, nice. That'll be yeah. awesome. Yeah, I actually, uh, my family's from about, uh, just about 25 minutes south of Lake Geneva. So it's, you know, it's it's more like the time of year is kind of a hassle to get up there. But, you know, in terms of having people to stay with. That's uh, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold my beer time. Yeah. I love this guy. Jeremy, the works like he does are awesome. And you see scrolling right below me right now. Uh, one of the drawings is going to be a 3D print compilation of either the Huntwood script, Scriptorium, all that, or the uh, Huntwood's Mine, or or the Tower setup. And if you have all three of them and you win, I'll figure something else out. Plus two, we got two Troller Game 10 Art Gift Certificates, so we got four giveaways. Okay. Um, and there's the mine. So there's a lot of, a lot of great things coming. Uh, Jeremy, welcome back, and thank you. And then Bill the Master Crafter, you know, 
needs no introduction, but go ahead, man. Well, you guys know me. I'm on the game. Uh, what Jay needs, I make pretty much or whatever I want to make and Jay will use. <laughs> it's a, yes, it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, I don't have him chained in any basements, even though some people say that. I don't. I mean, you know. Bill, Has Bill, he been feeding you, Bill? <laughs> Has he at least been remembering? Right now. Down the basement right now. <laughs> yeah, his I'm basement. not surprised. <laughs> his, not mine. So, uh, and uh, um, some unbelievable stuff has come out too. And I want to, I, I want to, uh, like, we'll be, we'll have pictures. We, we want to share everything that everyone's doing to help the gaming community because you all are. And that's the wonderful thing. We all love visuals. We all love miniatures. We all love the paint, painting and the crafting. And that's why, hey, Sam, that's why we, uh, I want to do these more often. So uh, here's my question to everyone is what has been like the biggest thing that's happened in the, this year uh, for you or for something that's going on uh, uh, gaming or crafting wise? So that would be my question. Like what like, something you've done or something that you're like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. This has come out with a new program, you know, so that everyone can uh, try and keep up to date. Who wants to take that first? Yeah, I'll jump right in there. Go for it. Um, I'm going to test this. Honestly, my commission list this year, and really a big part to some of the amazing people in this community here, uh, Troy commissioned me to do five massive dragons. We're doing the five chromatic dragons, and I've been slowly working my way through them. Uh, but just the amount of experience and new knowledge that I'm gaining working on these miniatures, they are turning out to be some of the best pieces I've ever painted. And uh, that opportunity to do that is really, really awesome. And that's a really big job for me. So it makes me feel like I'm going somewhere, which is a really good feeling. But like, just did this boy was the most recent boy and he's just they're all huge like this so <laughs> i think i got That's awesome. I, think, I think i got a really nice pick of that you do you do here we go there yeah my baby my child <laughs> nice i uh, i well i'm gonna ask how many hours you have in this that's a really great question bob <laughs> <laughs> i honestly have no clue at this point a lot i think um i looked and i went back to when uh the first stream was hey, sure. and that didn't include mold line cleaning and assembly and priming uh about a month and a half on this guy is the amount of time i put into him excellent so. Really cool. He's definitely one of my best paints today. I'm so proud of this dragon. This is a Reaper. Is this from Reaper? It is. Bones? It is. Uh, it's okay. a Kickstarter. It's the Kickstarter five. Yeah, Bones five. Yeah. Yeah. So I have all all the dragons from that, and we're just we're working our way through. So uh, Mystical says you can track your hours and 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 paint palette in an app called Brush Rage. I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah, cool. that's good to know. Thanks, Mystical. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is uh, some wonderful, wonderful work on that. So that's what you're most proud of, and uh, that's fantastic. Your commissions are are uh, exploding, which is great. It's a really good feeling. Yeah, it's definitely. It's a big project to tackle. So It is. <laughs> <laughs> and Troy's very amenable. Right, it's big and daunting. Yeah. Yeah. Troy's not Troy's like... Yeah. Go ahead. Troy's not like, I, don't, I want these in two weeks. He's giving you the whatever yeah. time. Yeah. He's so patient, and uh, he also is letting me do other commissions in between the dragons because he's like, I don't want you to get burnt out on these five dragons, so feel free to do commissions between them. Great. So that it's been uh, really great. Troy is awesome to work with. That's fantastic. Don't tell him I said that though. Well, he's sitting right there and he's listening. <laughs> tell him I said so. something. Troy I said something mean. Earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> Troy likes it when people say mean stuff. <laughs> That's awesome, darling. Very cool to hear. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing them. Uh, where am I? Yeah, there you go. Where are those dragons, damn it? I, you know, and I know Mike, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's had that issue before with time. Uh, people wanting stuff super quick, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's good to hear from, it's really good to hear from, uh, from someone that, uh, you know, uh, that that's not the case on this, uh, on this instance. Um, Mike, what's the big thing that's, uh, Happened to you for this year as far as something different, something new, something awesome? 
Um, I would say uh, the biggest thing is hitting over six thousand followers on the channel. Good. So oh, that was that was a big thing. It was a, a milestone, and uh, we just hit six years on Twitch uh, on the fourteenth. Awesome. We had a celebration for that. Um, and of course, we've got Disney Con coming up this weekend, so that's going to be huge. Uh, other than that, uh, everything's just uh been about the same. Okay, and it's just your birthday. Yeah, just it was just your my birthday. Nice. Yeah, it was my birthday he's, on the. He's twenty one again. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What uh, is Disney Con? What do you do at Disney Con? Yeah, uh, it's just uh, Dungeons and Dragons miniature painting contest, speed painting contest, paint and take um lots of board games uh i think some pathfinder is gonna be there too uh there's somebody running a brand new game i forget what it is but it's a sci-fi game um there's another like skirmish miniature game that's gonna be uh being played and being taught so there's 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 a few things going on there's gonna be a spaghetti dinner that night cool uh on saturday night a couple dozen people attending uh, so far, we've got fifty. That's oh, awesome, Mike. So the the capacity is fifty five. So happy to hear that, man. Hopefully, they don't bring any friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Stand outside. Yeah, no wedding crashers. Well, cool, Mike. I'm showing this um, uh, winter winter wonderland uh, um, overgourd. It's pretty cool looking. White Walker overgourd. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. That is Thank cool. you. I like that. I like the white. I like white pumpkins in general. Like I think white pumpkins are super cool. Did you do this for yourself or was it a commission? No, nah, it was just for myself. Just a real quick paint. I didn't put a lot of time into it. H- how many unpainted uh, overgrowths you have left? I've got three or four left. Yeah, still not released by Reaper, by the way. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be October from what I, I wish hear, they but... would. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Girl <laughs> wants to paint one. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, it, there's a lot of people that have wanted to paint one. I just, I wish I could tell them for sure, but Reaper hasn't let me know when they're going to release it. And uh, the, the rumor is just uh, October, so which is the appropriate month for it to be released. <laughs> right. Right. But the thing is, is people want to use it for games in October, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. 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 So hopefully before Halloween, people will have at least a few days to to paint it up for their their theme game or whatever but uh well, you i really can still use it for like a november thanksgiving game that's yeah, true that's true that's true but i Revenge I, of the pumpkin pie. I, right, I yeah. really 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 <laughs> appreciate all the support and love that you guys have given for the overgourd it's been great the community's been great and i've uh, just seeing people paint that up and posting it on in instagram and, and stuff it's just it's wonderful and some people don't even realize that I was I designed that little guy, you know. <laughs> they will comment on their post and it's just it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's it's humbling. You said uh for giveaways we're gonna give away one of those overgored prints right there. So uh signed by Mike. Um Yeah, check out Mike's ST as well. I just yeah. uh, posted it in the uh, chat. Hey, thank you, Bill. Well that's cool, Mike. ST. I still yeah. say ST instead of ST. So but that's, that's and a- and you're growing this epic beard. <laughs> <laughs> that sucker's gonna get trimmed here soon. <laughs> it's out of control. I keep finding beer hairs all over the place, getting in my paint, <laughs> getting in my oh. wet palette. Nice. He just makes some new brushes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. How about you, Christine? You gotta have some un- unbelievable stuff uh, happen this year to you. We've been we've been doing a lot, a lot of stuff this year, but uh, one of the biggest pushes that we've been working on are these new book boxes uh, for my sets. Hold I'll on, see if you can see it on the, the end. Yeah, it's, it's blurring out. <laughs> Wait a minute. It doesn't, it doesn't Pull it like back a little bit. Autofocus back, here, back, but... back, 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 back. Back. Maybe if I put it where my head is. Yeah, yeah, it's still not focusing. Well, it's like yeah, it's still not focusing. There you go. Oh, and you put your hand in front of it. Wow. Turn, put it to put, put it next to your ear. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Put it next to your ear. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not focusing. That is strange. That is really strange. 
Do I have like a a blur thing on or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you like have a background, your background, your background, background blurred. blurred. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, maybe if I turn that thing off. How do I turn that off? You should be able to go into your camera settings and zoom. Yeah, because I got you. And I, I highlighted you there. I don't think he gave me a picture oh. of one of those, or I'd throw one of those up uh, on the screen for uh, a pick wise. Wait, so. there we go. There we there go. There you Figured go. It it's all right. We can see the background. That's <laughs> Figured fine. it out. All right. So um, okay. So yeah. So here are these um, book boxes. They have like three dimensional shadow box covers oh, wow. up here, and then uh, the setting that they belong to goes here. So there's a different logo for each setting, and then on the inside are the figures for the sets oh nice and it comes with six figures for each set and they all have the names in the little uh foam that's oh, all custom oh, that... made for them and everything that's awesome christy that's that is so, so cool. awesome yeah that is really yeah, cool yeah. i remember so when you a... were coming up with that yeah so this is our halfling set so all of our halflings are mediterranean themed they're like greek italian sort of yeah, inspired let me throw that picture up i have that i have a tribes picture i, I pulled this off instagram. oh yeah, yeah yeah i pulled that right off instagram look at this i'm flipping <laughs> That's my screens husband's hand. Flip, he's flip. a hand model <laughs> there we go so here they are yep yeah nice really nice stuff and those are all hand drawn uh, hand drawn by you then z z knifed right is that it and then and then <laughs> yeah, that's all the concept art. Yeah. I drew, I draw my own concept art, and then uh, I sculpt them all in ZBrush. Yep, really cool. Incredibly talented, seriously. Uh, so, uh, where is that set only available on Tribes right now, or is it available? Uh, is it re ready to go yet? Uh, no, it's it's out and available. It's this month's release for Tribes, but you can also just buy them on our our online shop or our Etsy store if you want physical models or on our online shop for like digital STL downloads if you print. So There's yeah, the my mini factory link. Yeah. Hold off. A coupon is coming, everyone. It's a hold I off. I got this one. That's all the Poison Apple pub. So it's like a drop-in pub setting with all the characters. Oh, that's awesome. You can awesome. see on the, on the back. Yeah, the, the bartender is really, the big guy is really exceptional. Thank you. He's actually inspired by a sculptor friend of mine, Andy Peeper. Uh, and I, I had him send me pictures like in the pose. And I was like, do this for me, Andy, and put your hand up a little higher <laughs> so I could get the right pose for him. Uh, but yeah. And then we've got another one that's uh, Trouble in Witherberg, which is uh, a witch, Cornelia, and a, her whole little army of corn husk dolls that we released last <laughs> october corn husks and they it comes with like a whole adventure that you can run for your game and uh it was a really fun thing and we got to talking about it and we we're like we should do a sequel to that for halloween this year so next month's release is going to be a sequel to cornelia and the huskers and even though you defeated her in the first uh, adventure, there was a greater evil. So, oh, nice. So that's going to be fun. Some that fancy... one's going to be based on like the Wicker Man and some exactly. flaming <laughs> skeletons and ha. stuff. All that's right. super cool. Yeah, I yes. love full core. It's the best. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, right? I love autumn. Like. Just any time the seasons start changing, I get like super inspired to do like more seasonal themed stuff. Yeah, it well, was our first Halloween event at the amusement park last night, so oh, the, nice. the season has started. I already ran an Overgrown adventure though for Mike. He wanted me to do one for Zambies in the middle of the summer, and I did. So I'm wondering if <laughs> should, you know, right? I may have to do another one in a couple weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. So really cool. Yeah, we got we see your uh, reclining husband in the background. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's a he's chilling out. That's per it's okay. It's okay. My partner in crime. You probably see uh, you know, I got cats and sons running in and out all the time, so it's no <laughs> big deal. All right, so that leaves Jeremy and Bill. So, uh, um, what's been great for exciting for this year? So what's um, good? I'll go first if Bill does. Sure, go for it, Jeremy. They'll leave me just enough time to. Go get a glass of whiskey after I'm done. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I wasn't planning on meeting so long to get this set up. That's okay. Don't uh, worry about it, man. I realize with the uh, screen facing this way, I can't see what anyone else is doing. So, but that's all right. But you can move back uh, and forth, man. You could, you know, yeah, yeah. You don't, you know. So, uh, uh, exciting things this year. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just been a, uh, just been a lot of work. I guess the nice thing is, uh, yeah. I spent seven months doing uh, underdark stuff, and uh, I refused to do any spider stuff or any of that other uh, weird shit. And, uh, <laughs> my business did not collapse, uh, even though it was maybe something a lot of supporters weren't maybe super interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, it was nice to know I could spend a really excessive amount of time uh, working on something without... Uh, you know, everybody started disappearing on me. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I think that's about it. Other than that, it's just been uh, just been work. And I was uh, sick a bunch of times this summer. And so that kind of cut into pool time and stuff like that. So it's just kind of an Eeyore summer, I guess. Well, let, let, let's also go back a little <laughs> bit further. You had a super successful Kickstarter, man. Whoop, the, wrong button. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't. I, it was okay. The, I mean. The lighthouse? I just, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I ran it as a promotional thing and it did okay. Uh, I would kind of like to do another one, but it's just been uh I don't know. There's just not really enough time. Uh, and I only got two arms. Well, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Uh, I had someone come in and help me with that. And uh, that went okay. But, uh, you know, everyone's looking for work. He's been helping out a uh, company out in uh, California. And they're uh, paying him 50 bucks an hour. So that's pretty good for him. But uh, I think I'll probably need to. I might need a new partner in crime eventually if I want to do another Kickstarter. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm just showing that in application here with, with Bill's crafts done. This is an adventure I just did just a, a few months ago. It wasn't that long ago with Mike. Mike, you were on this one, remember? We yeah. went out. Yeah, we went out to the Asia Sea, and there was that. Uh, you know, you you, you um, actually um, uh, LJ uh, character had the. Uh, uh, an item I thought would never get used in a million years, right? A Qual's Feather Token Tree, and she actually used it on this adventure. Um, and then here's another here's another application from a different adventure where we ran with the Reaper ship. So, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, the build crafted all up. Uh, and that thing is freaking huge. It's so big. <laughs> yeah. We had, we had to have two because I had to have the glow-in-the-dark version also, but... We have to, yeah, we have two, but yeah. we don't have the glowy one. So uh, yeah, I have one here that I printed all kinds of stuff. I want to start to resculpt the top deck and the, the forecastle, but just I haven't had time to get to it. Yeah, mine's still in the box. <laughs> but this and, we, and we printed one of those arcane mini ships, so we have <laughs> we have too many ships in this house. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's we have a um, our we have these old resin ships we got from back in the early two thousands from a defunct company, and then this is like the first ship we, new ship we've had in a long time. Uh, but yeah, but I love the the layhouse setup, and it also isn't uh, the top of this bill another piece that you did up somehow not, uh, that was oh is that the building uh, that we just yeah the did? building the bottom lower half of the lighthouse. Jeremy was sent me some. Uh, extra pieces, and I was able to craft that other uh, tomb, cairn, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so that was it. that was in painted the one area. top, and then created a sod roof for the other. Yeah, Bill, yeah. how did you do the uh, the water effects? That looks really cool. That's a mat. That's, that's a battle mat by Mars, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we have two. We have uh, we have two different mats. Here, let me bring that back up. So, if is you that look, PVC, Jay, or is that like what that, is that? That's the only one I have. It's PVC. All the rest of mine are neoprene, right? They're all uh, or what do you call it? They're all uh, mouse pad, right? If, it, if you look behind oh, really? it, oh yeah, oh yeah, they're great. Absolutely. This one's the only. This one's the only uh, PVC uh, plastic one I have. You can see the ripples in it if you look closely. From it originally being rolled up, they're almost impossible to get out. But yeah, this, all the water effects are a uh, matte. And as you, if you notice, a lot of my scenes, we have. Like, I don't have any place to put them all, so we got like a, a stack on the floor. Everyone trips over all the time. Like fifteen mats. 
different ones we use. But this is the only one that is not uh, um, is not that um, two sided um, mouse pad. Uh, but it's nice. It really is. It's cool. It shows the you know water line and everything. So we we make them work absolutely. It looks beautiful. Thanks. It's a, it's a really that came actually with the Miniature Building Authority Harbor Town Kickstarter. Uh, so it has to go back four years. We've had it. So uh, with uh, with Miniature oh, Building Authority. Yeah. yeah. So a really neat piece. All righty. And Bill, what about what about you as far as a, a good year here? Uh, I don't know. Jeremy just keeps sending me great stuff to work on, and I keep printing new things to paint. So it's uh, probably the, the, the Dark Elf Fortress. I was really happy with the way that turned out. That was uh, that's a, that's a fun piece. All right. Well, I guess we'll go right I to that. I know you got now. pictures to have on the table. Pictures? Pictures? I have it right here. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, but I changed. I put it on an MDF base and built it right. up with bark to spread the the bottom out, just to make it a little wider base. Yeah, this thing is this thing's pretty large, and um, so you took this and and enhanced this so that it is. You know, this is a three D print, but you actually built up the, these sides are all built up with what what materials? Pine bark. Okay. Just your pine chips you would use in your yard, the big pieces. That's brilliant. And, uh, and I made my own sculpt mold. It's just uh, it's plaster, water, and ground up uh, paper insulation, just to keep it a little little lighter rather than using all plaster. Bill, how long did, did that take you? Uh, I, probably twenty twenty five hours, something like that. Because there's a, it, it's the, it's the, there's a lot of prep, a lot of drying <laughs> time on top of it. Yeah. Adding grasses and it's it adds up. Jim, if you want to flip really back, impressive. Jim, if you want to flip back to a screen where you can see everything, please do. You know, please do that. If that if that makes more sense, I want I want to show you something that's so genius about the way Jeremy does stuff. We I guess when we first met, we talked about this. There's playable surface for miniatures everywhere on this on this. See, top top level, third level. Second level. I mean, look at that. Perfect. And you can just peel this right off all the way down to the basement. You know, you got, you got a piece that is, is great visually, but it's useful, right? It has use to it, uh, which is what we want. We want stuff that we're going to, you know, um, take and, you know, have a, have a, a fight. And, and Mike, um, I think you guys... Was it your your group went into the basement of the one, right? We I mean, went the week after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys went back into the into the uh, um, the far. Oh my god, uh, the twisted forest, and you guys went actually yeah. into back into the keep, into this. And uh, I was I was like, cool, man. We got to adventure inside it, and that's just some of the cool things that you know. Jeremy does a great 3D piece, um, and then but Bill's going to enhance it further. And make it look even more cool on our table. So the other thing I was really happy with, I just posted a link in the in chat. Uh, was didn't start out as a as a little cooperative program, but Mike painted a really cool large oh. scalable mini oh, yeah, some time ago. Awesome. <laughs> I, I and I said I was going to do something with it, and uh, I ended up making this graveyard. I just did my Instagram link. There's a with video the smoke of it. machine. We finally that is so used. rad. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> yeah. To really so that's that was another project that I was really that's that was a fun one that it's not used on the table but it's uh, it was a fun piece to do. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah, that skeleton was a lot of fun to paint. So that's a joint combination of of, of uh, for for both there. Really a nice, really a neat thing. And there's a little overgourd. Uh, there's uh, there's the just the right number of pumpkin heads for the overgourd spread around the ah. around the diorama. Nice, clever. It's, it's pretty amazing the uh, um, thought process and collaboration. You know that Bill's thinking about that, and Mike did the skeleton up, and you know, uh, is that is that from scratch, Bill? Bill, or is that a three D? Is that is there anything in there from any other company? 
or is that all scratch? Uh, yeah, the, the fence, uh, the fences are infinite dimensions. Okay, cool. The tombstones are just generic stuff off Thingiverse. The, uh, the angel up top is from Loot Studios. Uh, the tree is sagebrush and sea foam with miscellaneous flocks on it, but and the rest is just made out of. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think what the uh, the gate for the the tomb is actually. That's a, a sewer entrance for Loot Studios as well. Oh, cool! But, nice. That looks how, so good, Bill. <laughs> how long have you been doing this sort of thing, like uh, like crafting? terrain and stuff for D&D games? Uh, I guess I really got into it four or five years ago. I mean, I made me little things, but never nothing to the, the level that I'm, that I'm doing now. That's only been in the last four or five years. That's so, so impressive. impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So if you go back to the early 2000s, we had Geohex. In the 90s, we had Geohex, which everyone goes, oh, what's all that hexagonal stuff you have on the table? And that was, we used that for Battletech. And I'm thinking to myself, why aren't we using this for D&D? You know, the scale will work. And then Miniature Building Authority came out with all those resident buildings, in, like in 2000, we started using them. And we had miniatures painted. Then monster, those plastic monster minis came out in the early 2000s from from, you know, Watsy, and then we started using them. And it really wasn't, right, Bill, until, well, I don't know, what, four or five years ago when 3D printing really just went through the roof, started, that it, things changed. Yeah. 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 The other big project was this one. So I'm just posting it now. It was uh, Jeremy's Scriptorium. And that's just uh, me walking around it with a camera. Yeah. I'm going to put the – I'll post it. I'll post that right now too. I have that on my the machine here. If I can find it. I thought I did. Yeah, uh, Jeremy, that's so many pieces. Like how do you even have time to sculpt all of that? <laughs> good question, uh, Jeremy. I I don't know. There's a lot of like parts that I made years ago that I've kind of just worked on a little bit. So it's like huge chunks of things. It's like, you here know, is, here it is on our table. The, the reason, uh, so I mean, it's just kind of the same thing you do with miniatures, where you know you have to have the assets on hand to keep up with, uh, to keep up with all the uh, Eastern European auto work video game makers that we have to compete against. Um, you know, you just you just kind of have to have your stockpile on hand and just throw it together and crank it out. And there are some pieces here that are like unique to the industry, like this. The, the rookery. Look, look at that with all the like uh crap and the eggs oh, no. out. I mean that's yeah, just it's it, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's 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 originally it's a dove coat, but uh I made it into the rookery. Yeah. yeah. A lot of that comes uh you know I always listen to people when they have ideas of things they want. You know, I don't really uh so if someone makes a suggestion, I'll just be like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so, and that was a suggestion from a guy who was really into, you know, history. He turned me on to like all these thousands of uh, these dove houses they have across England. And, uh, you know, I just sort of picked a hybrid of a few different ones and threw it together. So this is actually a place now for our free city of Altamira box set project for Troller games. So it's called Sojourns Repose. It's outside the city and has already placed it on the map that she's working on for the, for the box set uh, and above view with all the buildings and all. And this is like the place of the maesters, the class bill created, right? Which is, you know, we're going to change the name to magister. So we don't get, you know, Magister's ripping off game yeah. of Thrones. Uh, so um, and I got a good back angle on this too. I got three and then we'll, move on from this uh here we go is that it yeah so this is cool uh, an angle from the back just the level of detail is really fantastic and also the castle piece here this piece here with the connection we have steps for both the both pieces here that jeremy created and if, uh so that now we can separate those and use them separately in in, in two separate uh pieces uh which is really cool 
so that uh, it doesn't have to just go connected here at that point. It can. Yeah, be you can see those in the BattleTech pictures from over the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. We used them in the we used them in, uh, one of them in the BattleTech game. Um, so, and we've used this piece separately as well. I'll show that in a little bit when we're in a twisted forest. This was all by itself uh, as a separate piece. So, yeah, uh, Bill, some unbelievable crafting work on this too. You know, so um, having yeah, fun. it's way nicer than mine. <laughs> That's okay. That's that. That's the great stuff that he does. Um, yeah. uh, thank you, Dirty. Uh, yeah, you're doing stuff to get to get it to get it <laughs> pictures up on a website. I'm I'm getting and I have time to do it. Yeah. Well, I have time to work on it sometimes. So, um, what is everyone working on right now? How's that sound? What do you got going? And if you want to share it or show it or talk about it please who wants to go first on that uh well i've got a uh, like i said i'm working on the new set for next month's release which would be the follow-up to cornelian the huskers and i've been sculpting some flaming skeletons and a wicker man and there's gonna be Ooh. uh cornelia's now turned into a undead w lich and uh, so we're going to have some cool characters for that. I'm is excited. that this one? Uh, it's going to be for next month. Is that this? No. So that's the one that we released last year. Oh, okay. A sequel to that. Okay. That's all the uh, Wicker Men and the Witch. Okay. Cornelia. This is all right. Good. Very cool. Yes. Yeah, so th this has been really fun because I kind of get stereotyped into this uh, cute and whimsical sort of characters a lot of times and this is very much a, a direct deviation from that it's very dark and gritty and i've been getting into the mood by watching like the witcher and the the wheel of time and kind of getting into some of these grittier fantasy uh shows to get in the mood for it yeah uh which has just been really fun and we just got our our my minis just got put into a first game store Oh, Ho hobby store, uh, Lionheart Hobbies, and um, they are also going to be released in another game store very soon. So that means uh, we're moving into retail, which is super exciting. That's fantastic! Congrats! That's, That's awesome. A big step. <laughs> that is uh, that is fantastic. Yeah, Christine has some great miniatures, uh, especially some great elves and stuff for for PC characters if people want to print them. So there's, yep. she's got a great minstrel. She's got a female elven warrior. That's fantastic. I mean, there's some really great, and pirates, plenty of pirates. <laughs> yeah. And we have a lot of the pirates, um, um, in our, uh, bill has done them up, which is really cool. So we have them, uh, and you, you we're very fond of sea based adventuring, you know, in the Harby area and things like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, we get some use. So, and there's the code again. Everyone, that code is available tonight, so please use it. All right. Very cool. Um, so, uh, that's exciting. Uh, you have a, a set date on that, on the addendum, on this, uh, Christine? Oh, it'll, it'll be released on the first. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. There's some of Christine's concept art. Yep. It's all on Instagram, too. Very nicely done on Instagram. Awesome. Um, what else is everyone else working on? Jeremy I'm working on a big blue dragon right now. Yes. <laughs> uh, and my, my, my viewers are giving me so much crap about it. Cause they know that I hate the color blue. It's my least favorite color. And I've been making jokes that I'm either going to love blue by the end of this, or I'm going to hate blue more than I already did. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're making some headway on this guy. Pretty excited about him. He's more electric blue. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's been a lot of fun to work on. Uh, and then Go once nice. we finish him, I got a huge Vecna bust to do. So... That's going to oh. be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like blood and gore and gross, which is like my bread and butter. So I'm really, really looking forward to Vecna. <laughs> That's awesome. That um, So uh, how have you, 
in your games, uh, ideas of incorporating what you're doing into the games, like, you know, uh, some key miniatures or just not to, you know, still just hitting out the commissions, which is more of a problem. I, well, my commissions are not leaving me any time for personal painting right now, which right. is definitely not a complaint. Okay. And I don't have the space where I'm at right now to set up a table that my dog's wouldn't uh be able to get to so we're we're looking to buy a house in the spring and um i'm very specifically looking for something that gives me more space in an office of my own so right. i can start because my i really want to start working on di dioramas that's like the next step from what i'm doing now but i need the space to put out a table to work on dioramas. You absolutely need space yeah and, and i just don't have it <laughs> You're like, I need four bedrooms and preferably an Adam's family vibe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But yeah, so that's kind of where I see my work going outside. Like my personal stuff that I want to work on is dioramas. I love like Bill is a huge inspiration for me. The work you do, Bill is insane. And now knowing that you've only been in the game for like five <sighs> years is kind of blowing my fucking mind right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. It's, Dioramas are awesome. And and by the way, that one that Bill posted, we can use that in a game. I mean, you know. Can we please? Can I be in that game? Sure. You're talking about the skeleton one. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll try. Uh, I've got a whole other cemetery piece I'm working on that. Yeah. It's a two by two board piece. So that's. But it won't be done for this. Down the road. It won't be done for this Halloween. No. <laughs> it's got LED lights in it and the fog machine and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's super cool. A little further down the road. Are you getting like little like mini fog machine setups for these? Like how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I could find the link. Uh it's a miniature you can get I'll 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 grab it and you guys can see the size of it. It's yeah. tiny. It's for cosplay. He just like drops oh, dry cool. ice oh. into it. <laughs> the cost, I think I've seen the cosplay ones. They're tiny. That's so Yeah, cool. it's really small. Um, I, I think we got it right on Amazon. And uh and, well, he's just, as he's he's going into the back room where all the, the, the stuff's hidden. It's all <laughs> it's all secretive back there. So here it comes. Here let me blow you up, Bill. Uh well, that didn't sound good. Let me put so you this on. is this is it. All right, I got oh, you. it's basically an oversized vape pen. Okay. Uh, and it just you put glycerin in the front. This is the heating element, and it, you can hook tubing or whatever you want to the front. The guy makes all kinds of attachments for it, where you can uh, just run tubing. You can run. Hey, he has diffusers. He has LED lights. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find the guy's link and put it on here. It comes out of Europe. That's out of really oh, that's right. Cool. That one came. From, yeah, we had special order that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and these are battery operated or uh, AC, so it's that's nice. How long does a charge of fog last? <clears throat> uh, Twenty. Well, I, I haven't had to run it long enough, but he says you know a full, full when it's fully filled, about a half hour. What's it get filled with? Glycerin. Okay. You know, your regular over the counter glycerin you can buy liquid. You fill it up, put it on there, turn it on. So, I mean, it's, oh, it's adjustable speed too, so you can have it, you know, run run very little fog as well. So, but yeah, they use it a lot in cosplay. Awesome. That's very cool. And the good thing is, Bill does a lot of research on like neat little knickknacks. Uh, so, like the programmable LEDs we use, that was another of his ideas. Like, hey, we can you just press a button on a little remote, and it's going to change the color of your LED. You know, and and so that was a cool thing that he, he uh, and I never even knew they existed. So. Yeah, and it helps. It just visuals on the table, really cool. Yeah, there's so many of them out there. I mean, you just Google mini fog machines. <coughs> Excuse me. Basically, they're just heavier duty built vape pens. Yeah, but this one works really well and has you can get replacement parts and stuff for it. So that was the big thing for me. All right, J Jeremy, what do you got going on there on your screen, man? Uh, well, I'm gonna try to resolve. Uh, <clears throat> I'm doing a bunch of expansion pieces for those walls I put out. I don't yes. know if you happen to have a. Oh, I, I do. I do. I, I mailed do. them. I mailed a set to Bill the other day. <gasps> I don't know yeah, they they're, should, uh, they're, they're, they'll be here tomorrow, it says. Oh, cool. Um, so, anyways, uh, I'm doing uh, 
like a straight tower section of 45 and end tower a stair section maybe a couple other things this is uh like a straight one this is resolved and what i'm doing is these things called half towers and i guess uh, I didn't realize how common they were. I, at first, I thought they were kind of rare. But the more I look at these castles and stuff, the more I realize people just kind of take pictures at an angle that make it look like uh, the towers are full, but they're not. And then the idea is in real life that, like, if you lose the walls that, uh, you know, they can't use the towers against the people who are in the keep that's, you know, further into the fort. And I think for like just playing war gaming, it'll be fun because you have your access right there. It's not like closed off or anything. So I'm doing like one of these and these holes here, this is going to be like, this is a bit of fantasy here, but it's like a ballista nest basically. So no, dude, that's awesome. Can, that's playable. Can have a, yeah. So you can have like a medium to large or maybe a couple of small ballistas down there and kind of fire at people. Um Another thing, let's see what else I was able to open up here. No, that's that's great. Oops. Jeremy, are you planning on making uh, an auxiliary steps for those um, for you, mean uh, like, you know stone? You mean like this? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Perfect. <laughs> per Look at that. Do it. <laughs> that's perfect, yeah. man. Look at that. Yeah. Holy jeez. I yeah, yeah, the you. Dark Elf set was so great having the steps. So that's that was great. Okay, yeah, yeah and I don't know if those were playable. These will be these are indented, so you can like hook a mini base in there. A one inch base. Come on, like Legolas yeah. can Legolas can slide right down then on his shield. Sure. Yeah, you yeah. know? Just like in Lord of the Rings. That's perfect. And uh, let's show these that um this is what Jeremy's talking about uh that's done. So um here's one of them okay so this is going to be the northwest gate of the free city of altamira now um uh which is just fantastic now if i show you the pick on the other side let me see i think i have it here it shows uh oh, crap i thought i had it printed out i thought i had it up All that's right. a good one there you go. It shows you some of the rear, you know, look look at those platforms behind the walls. They're so it's not going to be a thin platform behind the wall. It's going to be something that you can put large monsters on, you know. Even a dragon could land on it or something. And that's that's the important thing on these walls is that uh, it, it's playable surface. So um, it's really a nice uh, set um, coming. So, Jeremy, did I understand you right? Are you saying that... Uh, the base of a one inch figure can like tuck into the stair, the next stair, so that yeah, can a lot stand of people, a lot of people do that. It's just a matter if they leave enough room around there for like the thing. Yeah. And uh, I got ladders that do the same thing. That's such a cool idea. I, I don't think I ever would have thought of that. Yeah. It's not my idea. I definitely stole that one. Um, but it's been, you know, around the community. Uh, Let's see who else. Ian Lovecraft. I think a lot of he kind of goes back and forth, but a lot of his stairs will do that. And uh, I don't know if you look at if you look at different people, you'll see them around where they got like kind of a yeah. a, a low fi cut, like maybe fifty five degrees with like a space under the stairs. Um, a lot of foam crafters will do it too, so it's so it's yeah. a playable space. Oh sure, so it probably comes out of a scratch building then originally. Uh, these are like these are crafting tricks I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, he comes up with some great uh, overall um, wonderful things. And uh, so, is that one of the side uh, wall towers? This is uh, the forty-five. I'm going to oh, have a more yeah. complex one, and then a simpler one. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Well, this... Oh, this is. I'll do this one first since I'm here. This is like the end tower piece. Beautiful. Uh, I like that so, with the house structure. Yeah, on yeah it. it's going to be house. like uh, so. If you have a cliff or like a sheer, you know, whether it's like a cliff going down or a cliff going up, you'll be able to like butt it up on the one side, and then it's kind of built like a mini keep. So um, it's useful. You know, yeah. So there'll be like a little armory storage area there with like a floor door. That people can use like but other that. than that it's a basic building it's not like anything fancy it's just sort of like solid stone you know because you figure if it's the end wall it's probably helps probably not coming so <laughs> yeah. 
Anyways, this is uh so the the 45 I'm gonna oh, put. That's great. So there'll be one version that's simplified where it's like a half tower, like what I showed on that uh straight section, but a little smaller. And then um there'll be one, and then this will kind of act as like uh you know, a, a choke point or something that people have to go through. So each one of the tower expansions will kind of have its own feel and its own kind of function, uh, as opposed to like just kind of a repeated uh, design. No. So it's taken a little more time than I wanted it to, but it's okay. I got the windows set up. So like tonight, I'm going to be working on that. I got to drop all these timber frames down because they're way too high for minis. Um then but, you might see me like messing around with the simplified version of this a little bit. Oh, good too. man! It's it. Hey, and I, I, you know, we we all had a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago and talked about this. We had Anna on because Anna showed the, her map layout. We got a lot. We had a lot of forty fives. Jeremy's like, no, you know, no problem. So that was that was yeah. a cool. Well, you'll have two versions of it then. Yeah, you know, a simplified and like kind of a housing version. Beautiful stuff fantastic so um let's see who we got now mike what's what are you going what's going on brother what's i'm what's just on? uh like i said preparing for disney con and uh okay i'm painting stuff for my um for my etsy right now in between commissions so uh that's that's really what i've been concentrating on concentrating on the stream too um i've missed a few days lo uh lately but uh we're getting back into the swing of things so um other than that just uh just like i said working on stuff for my etsy i sent you a bunch of pictures but you've only shown the overgourd <laughs> well I, I, I yes uh, i have them and, uh, and now you're next on what's going on right now right so here we go man i got it got it right here uh but, but those but, of what i've been working on for yeah. the etsy let uh, plus there's some of them are scrolling down at the bottom let's go to i love this one here, uh, some of these are recent uh, Instagram posts too, I believe. Um, let me get to the screen here. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's cool. Yeah, I did that for uh, a friend of mine in Pennsylvania. Yeah, really, really a cool one. Another one we got here. I love this one too. Uh, this this reminds me of a Blood Bowl character almost. I assume that's a Warhammer piece. No, that's uh, oh, that's a um, Signa mini. That's I love that. Piece. That is an awesome looking piece. Reminds you uh, almost of the Cobalt Commandos there, uh, uh, but a little different. Uh, you know, they're on bats. That is an awesome looking piece. Really cool. Throwing little bombs down. Uh, Signa makes some really nice stuff. I love this one too. It's, is that a Rakshasa? Yeah, it's huge too. It, it's that 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 scorpion's bigger than the, my hand. That is cool. Uh, who have made you been that? posting those on Instagram, Mike? That's um, that's Artesian Guild. Have I been posting them on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Periodically, I don't, I don't post uh, like every day. I post like maybe once a week. Okay. I love this smoke, like the the magic, multicolored smoke. Super cool. Thank you. That was that was a a, a person in chat's idea. Nice. Yep. I was just gonna do it old boring, you know, black and gray, but uh, they said no, nah, make it uh, different colors. So, kind of looks like cotton candy at the top. <laughs> that is so <laughs> great for that, though. I've I've been gifted so many great ideas through chat just yeah. throwing shit out at me it almost yeah, it almost wants you to think that a genie's coming out of that a smoke out of that yeah point. you're like oh you know yeah definitely yeah i i, I love painting rack uh christy has a really really nice one that uh that she did that i painted a long time ago i think we have that one too don't we bill yeah, I painted one as yep, well. Absolutely. Probably. That was an old, old video of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got this one. This has got to be Warhammer. Or maybe not. Nope, that's that's Signum as well. This is, wow. Signum's got a lot of nice minis. They're a company out of Ukraine that uh, sponsor me. They're actually um, 
sending me a uh, a huge shipment. It's a game that they're releasing, and uh, I'm gonna have to do videos for it on on not only mm-hmm. painting it but how to play it. And uh, so that's that's kind of a big thing coming up. That, it's not yeah. gonna be done for like six yeah. six months. I think they exactly. said. So I've got like a half a year to do it. <laughs> there are so there, there's mine. Don't compare it to Mike's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mike. Uh, Bill just listed his yeah, linked his Instagram for yeah. No, but it's a cool playable piece. Um, absolutely, Bill. It's cool. There are so many different colors on this, Mike. Holy shit! Yeah, Purple there's a lot of detail. And, wow, a lot yeah, of detail on it. Yeah, and it's a lot of lizard. fun paint. Yeah, that lizards turned into his battle axe. Yeah, that's 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 an awesome piece. All right, let me get to see. How about this one here? I like that one too. That yeah, that's cool. also that's also a Signa miniature. They've got they've got a lot of lot of great minis. I haven't came came across like a bad Signa miniature yet. So if anybody out there is looking for some beautiful, like heroic sized minis, go to Signum. They got some are, great ones. Are they 32 heroic then? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Which is a nice size. It's a, it's a good playable size, right? Yeah, good playable size. Better for older eyes, that's for sure. You can see it on streams too. That's uh, a thing they, too. Yeah, it looks like they sell three D printable models too. Yeah, they do. Yep, that's nice. That fabric is beautiful. On the is that NMM or true metallic? No, that's true metallic. Oh, nice. nice. Thank you. That when I was painting it, a couple of people are like, "Man, that NMM looks great." And I'm like, "It's not NMM." <laughs> It's true metallic, so I don't. I I've only done NMM a handful of times, and I don't enjoy. I don't. I don't like the way it looks when it. I uh, could never get mine to come out. Uh, Bill, uh, Mike, explain to the audience what you mean. Uh, NMM is uh, pretty much a, a fake metallic. You're you're trying to make it uh, look metallic without using metallic paint. Capturing the reflections on on certain surfaces and capturing shadows in in others uh, by just using browns and and yeah exactly NMM non metallic okay but uh, yeah that's 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 pretty much it because I was a layman on that terminology that shows you how much I know <laughs> oh seriously <laughs> so um. Bill, uh, let's just let's throw out another recent, shall we? Something, something uh, co- coordinating with Jeremy and you a recent um, setup. How's that sound? Uh, for, for, okay. Um, and you saw this on stream a little while ago. And this, uh, so this is the dark elf walls, right? Yep, and the fortress is in the background. Yeah. And the fortress is in the background, and the nasty stone giants that drove everyone crazy are behind there, which you painted. What did you say during that stream? You painted too many of them for me? I painted too many giants, yeah. Because <laughs> I used them. I'm, 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 I'm not painting bad guys anymore. <laughs> uh, talk about like the light fixture here. Just a little simple addition. Yeah, just a little 3D printed lantern, uh, hollowed out, uh, ran an LED through the top and hollowed out a spot in the roof, uh, soldered a little connection on there with a paper clip so I could just uh, squeeze a watch battery in there to run it. Little, sim- little simple connection. I thought you just painted that. <laughs> no, that's, li- that's lit. No, no it's, a, it's, it's actually it's a little LED flicker bulb. That's so cool. And it, it, it really, literally, there's a wire... And you just slide it in, and it sticks in there underneath and sits on it, and it lights it up. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah, so just a little addition to what Jeremy does on this stuff, and then Bill making some adjustments. As you can see, this is neoprene. That That is a neoprene mat, as you can see, uh, really detailed. Um, I think that is Fancy Games FGL from California. I think that one. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm going to call <coughs> okay. Are those uh, mats flat or are they like actually textured? Flat. Yeah. Flat. They're just flat. such high resolution print. Uh, it really adds to the. It adds another level to the scenery. Um, 
Yeah, what's nice is stuff doesn't slide on it real easy. No. So Plus you put the table, the terrain's not sliding all over the place. Because <laughs> I we tend not to lock it together just because it's easier to take it apart and put it, you know. Okay. This is another build job. Um, uh, as you can see, there's the steps we're talking about for the for that. This this is the um, actual uh, scriptorium. Yeah, 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 with the steps. Uh, and then look at all these things. Uh, these great individual pieces you would see in the middle of the, in the American Southwest or in a Roadrunner uh, cartoon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, uh, we use these for the uh, Twisted Forest. And just unbelievable um, work done. But by, by, uh, Jeremy sent us stuff and Bill just crafted it all up. And these big things in the back are awesome too. Uh, those big buttes are really neat. Yeah, one of them is from the Wasteland set. And one is actually the the base for the light uh, light the lighthouse. Yep. It's a little craft there. And uh, this was me. I just took a tea light and I shoved it in there. <laughs> <laughs> and lit it up. So, <laughs> yeah. Low tech. Uh, Low tech, but it works. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that was a couple weeks ago. Adventure we did, uh, mm -hmm. the Twisted Forest. In fact, that's the last adventure, not counting a special, special group that we, uh, we did. Um, and then one more here, and that would be this. I want to do it from this angle. Um, oh, this is the last adventure, because this shows some Der Jeremy stuff, too. This is going into the town um, that we uh, did on the last adventure, the Feathered Serpent. Uh, and this is an old, the river's very old. I got that on eBay back in, like, 2000 from a woman who did crafting back then. And then you can see a lot of uh, Jeremy's roads and the tower and all the other stuff, and then a lot okay. of NBA. One of Jeremy's buildings is here, too. Bill, tell us what you did with this outhouse back here. That's a, uh, I think who is that? That's Infinite Dimensions double outhouse. So it was a misprint, but I don't like to get rid of anything because resin's expensive. So I just made my own little uh, <laughs> cheater sculpt them old base, build it up, and uh, added a tree to it because, you know, well, an outhouse, there's plenty of fertilizer. So <laughs> trees are going to grow. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's good you got, logic. You got a scratch build cornfield out here, right? And then you got a lot of other things. So we're using a combination of a ton of different uh, crafters uh, on, on the on all of the the sets here. I think that's. Did I show? No. Okay, that's good. Glad you liked all those stones. I was. Really oh my god, dude! On sending that stuff to you instead of throwing it in the garbage. Oh my god, dude! Oh, no, they were, they were great. And they were, they were fun. I mean, they were easy. Easy to paint up, uh, but they they look great. Oh my god! You don't know the amount of of kudos we got for this adventure and the BattleTech game, which I ran Friday and Saturday. Is the BattleTech people have nothing like this? They, they, you know, everyone's playing on hex paper or whatever. They're really not playing on. They may have some. Uh, what, what's that? Mage Knight stuff. Where do they use Bill? The BattleTech guys. They use a lot of the hexagonal Mage Knight tiles. Yeah, they use a lot of that kind of yeah, stuff. Any, mean, anything is going to want. Anything that's got a one inch hex on it, well, you know, they try to, to do it that way rather than using that's miniature rules. Uh, it is, it, it is a, a, these are fan, these are like, what does everyone think? Dressing, background visuals, and, uh, and stuff with like, if you could notice on these, uh, what, oh, shit. Sorry. I closed it out. Closed it out. If you notice on his, Jerry always places a little bit. That's of a Jay's picture, picture from his home world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just real quick. If you yeah. notice, play. look at that. Right there. Shit. There's playable surfaces on stuff. That's what I'm trying to uh, yeah. relay. There's playable, like, yeah. playable surface. Look, right there. Playable surface. Playable surface yeah, yeah, here. Little... Yeah, playable surface here. Right? Honestly, but... I can imagine the fight scene from The Princess Bride where he's like, yeah. I I fight left-handed, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, and that and that's part of the great thing it's about perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and tile grout goes a long way as being a good uh, replacement for dirt because you don't have to paint it, and it's and it's solid. Oh, that's a good good idea too. Yeah. Eat to surf. I use earthquake putty to stick goblins on walls and stuff. That's cool. That makes that's a good idea. All right, so uh, we went through uh, whatever we went through a lot Same of thing. new stuff that everyone's doing. So, we, one of you has to have a question for everyone else, or some questions you want to throw about, uh, or some brainstorming. Um, 
someone want to ask the rest of the panel something? And if not, I'll open it up to the audience. Uh, oh. Here's one for Mike and, or, and Christine because they're both very accomplished painters. And, and uh, has anybody watched the Wheel of Time new season? Uh, I am in the middle of it, so don't spoil anything. But yes. Okay. Well, there's it. there's a, there's a woman in there who has blue blue black hair. Yeah. And I'd love to find out because I have a raven mage I'm going to be painting. Uh, and I'd like to do have that blue tinted black effect. And I've never, I've seen Mike do it on hair, but I don't know how to do it. Is it a blue, a black, and then a blue over, or a blue and a black fill, or? Yeah, no. I like to, I like to just do like, I don't ever use pure black in anything I paint because I don't think it gives a very naturalistic look. So I usually like to use a really, really, really dark blue um that's like an inky kind of color and mike i'm mm -hmm. sure you're better with the exact reaper color but like corporeal shadow is a really really good yeah inky blue black that's a good one um and i like to use that for the base and then i'll highlight with a brighter more saturated blue so that it kind of brings it out and then naturally our eyes will look for the complement of something so if you make the skin color more orange it'll make the hair look more blue if that Ooh. makes sense yeah so color theory is something i i have no forte in, <laughs> in color theory just a little trick what yeah, kind blues blues always look good with warm tones with with browns and and uh Oranges. What characters are for Bill? I, I can't say. Oh, <laughs> he's geez. like, it's a secret. You can't know yet. So, oh, thanks, uh, Patrick. Uh, Nightmare I'll, Black. I'll say it's, I'll say it's, it's this miniature. Ah, uh, uh, according to AK Rainshine, Nightmare Black is an excellent black blue from Reaper. Oh, I Nightmare Black. Yeah, that yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Nightmare Black. You have it? Yep. Oh, hey, Mary. It's great to have you in chat. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. Uh, he he took 90, my color theory class at ReaperCon this year. Oh, great. Year. Fantastic. And he said he was pretty new to the whole idea of, like, color theory in general and, and learning how to pick palettes for stuff. And he came to me after the class and said that it was one of his favorite classes. He took the whole convention and he got a lot out of it. So I'm, I'm super happy uh, that it was successful. It's good to hear those uh, words of affirmation that you're, you're doing a good job. <laughs> Great question. Darling, I love this miniature. Holy geez. Oh, that's he awesome. was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> Yeah, where's that for? Uh, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, that is a Lethal Shadows gaming miniature. Wow. <clears throat> uh, he is so Patrick runs that company. He's a, a really, really great guy. Um, and he also does all my custom printing for me because I don't have a space for a printer yet. Um, so he he's been great for all of that. But yeah, his website is really easy to get lost in because he it's huge. It's the amount of miniatures that they offer is just crazy. Yeah, that's uh, I love how he busted out of the ground and all the stuff still stuck to him. That's really cool looking. Yeah, that is definitely a cool looking miniature. Let's see what else I got here. I love uh, I love the color uh, colors done on this. The the angry drunk female dwarf with in pink. Yeah, she was a commission. <laughs> and uh, it was a model for his wife. Um, I think I gave you the image of the elf too. So that yes, was uh, that was the same commission. Uh, okay, he, he commissioned his wife's character and his son's character, and the elf is his son's character. And he messaged me and he said, "I don't know how you feel about painting pink, but I really 
I really want her outfit to be pink. And I was like, man, everyone thinks I'm doom and gloom, but I'm really <laughs> not because I love the color pink and I really, really love to paint pink, even though it's kind of annoying to work with sometimes. So I was super excited to do like this just ridiculous pink outfit on this little angry dwarf female. Um, but yeah, yeah, like I love those two pieces. They were a lot of fun to work on. Yeah, they're both very cool. I think uh, it would be especially challenging to do the the warm colored hair with the pink uh yeah cloth like balancing that would be challenging but you did a great job she looks great this... thanks Christine I feel like I need to take your color theory class too though because my that's a place I'm super weak as color theory <laughs> this is awesome thank you that piece was massive. That piece was the bane of my existence. Uh, it came in four separate pieces Ugh. on top of uh, it was really hard because it's it's really big, but the antlers are like so petite. And uh, Patrick did an amazing job of shipping it to me. And it's still like just so delicate. Like I had to piece together a bunch of antlers. This is the piece that I learned to sculpt on. <laughs> Because I'd never had to put together that big of a piece and and sculpt areas. Um, and there were a lot of things about the sculpting in that resin that I did not like very much. It, it was a real challenge to work with, but overall I was really happy with how it ended up turning out. Was this uh, for yourself or a commission? That was a commission, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Really cool stuff. Green stuff and Milliput are our friends. Yes, I used uh, Milliput for that. I heard not, I, I did a lot of research on the two before I chose what to use, and I, I had a lot of people saying uh, that green stuff is really shit. sticky. It can be. Yeah, yeah so I, I had a great time with the Milliput. I'm definitely, sculpting is not my favorite thing, but uh, I powered through it, and it was, it was pretty, you can't really see any of the seams on that guy, so I was really happy about that. Sculpting paste is also another. When Liquitex makes different density sculpting paste. Oh shit! Wrong button. Oh my god. It's kind of easy just to, to fill in, and it's it's easy cleanup. It's water solid, water water cleanable. You can fill the slots, rub it off, and it it'll seal most cracks. That's yeah. That's paste. really nice. I was using. And you can get that at your most of your at any your craft stores, Michaels or uh, you know Hobby Lobby or any of those. I was using a lot of alcohol with the milliput and making yeah. like a paste with that to kind of smooth out some of the areas and, and work in some, and that really worked well for me. And a lot <clears throat> of people mix green stuff and milliput together too. Oh, okay. Uh, Cause it stay it stays softer a little longer. Uh, but then once it hardens, it's hard. Yeah. I think that was one of my biggest issues with the milliput is I couldn't sculpt fast enough before it started so i'd have to make like really small mixtures of it and just kind of gradually work through it as opposed to being able to just kind of make a batch and have it and work off of it because <laughs> it does dry pretty quickly <laughs> sure it, yeah I, I i bill's got some great tricks and uh you know um just i was like how'd you fix that he's like uh, just did this I, okay. bill's a wizard yeah <laughs> oh, by the way, super I, I, glue and a, a paper clip. You can fix anything. I can get him mad. Bill, I broke one of the uh, PPCs off a of Warhammer yesterday. What, one of the resin ones or one of the. No, a metal one. One of the metal ones. ones. Yeah. Ah, well, that's that. Super glue, I mean, wears out over time. Those were those were probably painted 25 years ago. That's true. So it, it'll happen. That's true. Oh, exactly. And Jay touched it, which yes. guaranteed to break. <laughs> So Christine, I love these. Uh, I love the looks and all these faces of these characters. This is a six-piece set. Uh, um, yeah. Um, so Grimbridge Academy it was kind of like my version of uh, Hogwarts or Strixhaven or you know cool. one of these kind of fantasy magic schools, and I decided that I was going to reimagine. The characters from the board game Clue. Clue. Yes, I know the colors. <laughs> professors <laughs> for my school. Um, so Carmine, uh, who's you know Miss Scarlet, Scarlet, she's a a changeling rogue, and she's you know all into espionage, kind of like a Carmen Sandiego type character. 
Um, and then Professor Plum is next to her, and she's like a master of necromancy and the dark arts. And then Colonel Mustard is like, you know, uh, all into strategy and weapons master and cool. kind of inspired by Alan Quartermain yeah. and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, and then I think the one on the bottom is Mr. Green which I was inspired by kind of like old oh on the right hand side yeah, yeah Mr. Here. Green yeah. I was inspired by like the Green Man and sort of legends and, and tales of like how he may have transitioned faces throughout cultures and histories and so now he's he's like a fey ambassador to the school and Nurse White, who's just kind of like a sweet uh, nurse, but you know, practical. She's she'll she'll chop your arm off it if it means saving your life. But <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And then uh, Hellebora, which was Miss Peacock, but she's this very eccentric old druid lady, and you know, my when I was sculpting it, my best friend she goes. It's like you're sculpting a druid, but make it fashion. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, I just wanted to do this really eccentric kind of crazy lady that you don't know if she's good or evil. Like the interesting thing about a neutral alignment is that you really don't know which way they're going to fall on a given issue. And so I really wanted to kind of play that up with her character. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's... Um... I love her name too. Yeah. Huge detail, and this is sets available off your site too, and uh, the coupons out there for that too. So, go uh, yeah. go go get it. You know, there you go. <coughs> and is there a box available available for this set? Um, no, that I was the this. set that we released last month, and okay. I did not have time to finish making the box before ReaperCon. So, yeah. it is in the process, but not yet released in the box. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and there are. I, I you did send me this. I'm sorry, I didn't have put it up earlier. But yeah, there's the oh, box okay. that uh, add. Yeah, really cool. Um, but yeah, that's a great, great. Oh gosh, I, I thought I had something behind that. There's a great concept. Really fantastic. Thank you. It was a big hit at Rebricon. Um, our Patreon is where you can get like a monthly subscription to always get the the book boxes. But then we're just gonna sell them. You know, on the shop normally, if you if you're not a subscriber, you can still get it. But yeah, awesome. So uh, remember, four giveaways tonight, everyone! Exclamation point drawing to get in. Uh, you, uh, you do have to be a follower of the stream to win. Uh, it, it, just the, the the program knows if you're not a follower. I don't know how that happens, but it does. <laughs> so, but just to let you know. Uh, what what else we got here? So, um. I missed one on one or two on Mike. I mean, uh, what is, this thing is like? This thing freaks me out, Mike. What is that? What I, is that? It freaks me out, man. It's just like uh, it's like whoa. It's a pug farting. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It's a pug farting, and he's taken off like a pilot. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, well, yeah. I guess I'm too old. I think it's the one I missed. Did I miss any other ones? Yeah, I think that was it uh, on on that. But uh, so, um, oh no, no, I got these. There they are. I, that's it. That's cool. <laughs> How's that creep you out, Jay? <laughs> it just did. I didn't know what it was, man. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are Signum Toads. Those are Signum Minis as well. The three eyed toad. No, that's fair because that is freaky. <laughs> There's three of them. There's a purple one, a blue one, and an orange one. Yeah, and what's, yeah it's they're cool. Um, in fact, the adventure I'm running with Darling in its next Saturday night is called the Misbegotten. So there you go. Wonder they're, they're huge too. Those, those oh, are those. they big? Yeah, they're really yeah, large. They're big, There's, another, yeah. There's another mute, muted uh, thing. Are those all resin prints, Mike? Yep, all resin. Nice. Yeah. And it, it's really good <laughs> resin, too. It's not like 
uh, brittle, you know, how some resin is. Yeah. But you just touch it and it's like cracks or something. No, this is, it's really solid resin. What are nice. you printing in now? What's that? What are you printing in now? What kind of? Oh, these, are you using? these were sent to me. Oh, they, okay. they, yeah, this company sends everything to me. I don't have to print nothing or or anything. But I are still use the same. Are there stuff available on STL too, Mike, or is they are they all uh, pre printed? Nope, you can buy STLs on their site. Just go to to <laughs> Signum. Like I said, they're from Ukraine, so anything that goes to them really helps them out, of course, because they're getting attacked and bombed all the time by Russia. So. Uh, they're they've had to move offices actually because oh, really? their old Jeez. office, yeah, their old office got bombed. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, uh, but yeah, they're they're a great company, great group of people. Uh, if you go to their site and look at their minis, you can see that their minis are just they're they're beautiful and they are so much fun to paint. There's so much so much detail in them. Did they, do they have you send the stuff back to them or do you just uh give them pictures and then get to sell the stuff? Nope, just get the just give them pictures and I get to do whatever I want with the minis. Wow, nice. Kind, cool. of, kind of the same yep. thing you do for us, Jeremy, right? You um, know, you're, you're, you're what send- do I do again? <laughs> you send you send stuff out uh to, to us. We get uh, right. Bill gets the crafting, we get it on the table for average, you know, That's for right. yeah. Same same thing. Absolutely the yeah. same thing, which is, um, and then, um, was, was having it sent back to me an option? Because I would like to uh, you renegotiate. Said, <laughs> <laughs> considering, <laughs> considering most of the time you're like, uh, you say to us, I got all this shit all over the place. I want to get yeah. rid of it. You know, so, <laughs> but it doesn't like, matter. I if don't it, believe you. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's broken or not as, as well. I cannot find what I'm looking for. All right. Just always, always trouble there. Um, okay, so uh, any other any questions for the rest of the uh, for you, any of you to the rest of the crafters here? I don't, are you guys gonna make me come up with all the questions? <laughs> I could do that. I had a good one. I you asked that, uh, all yeah. about color. So. I know my I know my painting shortcomings. I'm a I'm a purely tabletop. What skill level? All right, you ready? I got one. What would be something that doesn't exist that would help you with your profession or craft? A cloning machine. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> a lot. They turn this into multiplicity. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I need like eight more hands that can do what I can do. <laughs> Uh, I could use a digital tariff system. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking for me, or for Bill, it was uh, a 3D printer that doesn't break, that something doesn't break on it uh, uh, all the time, right? They seem, right, to, right. They seem yeah, to break well, down. Well, a PLA one that didn't was more reliable yeah, was, PLA was nice. Are, I, hate, I hate printing in PLA. I, I never seem uh, to have good luck with it. it. You guys know they're coming out with like the high speed stuff now, right? We got, I got a few of them in the lab. Uh, they work pretty good. They print twice as fast and uh, the quality is higher. A lot of times I can't even tell the difference between the uh, FDM and the uh, resin prints. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of like just the start of it. So I don't know if it's good to jump in or it's probably better to wait a few more months, but. Yeah, there's some pretty exciting stuff happening with uh, FDM printers right now. All right, here come three quick questions. Let's see if we can handle these for the audience. Favorite paint brand? Go, uh, darling. Reaper, there, come on. Reaper, Christine Reaper, <laughs> darling. Uh, Vallejo, I use primarily. Bill. Uh, I mean, I use a lot of uh, a lot of Reaper in uh, over the counter craft paint for for uh, terrain and stuff. I don't use re- good paints on that. Mike. Reaper. One hundred percent, and and also you scale seventy five. I use a ton of that and uh, Pro Acryl. So those three right there, are my uh, my trinity, if you will. It's uh, those those are my best. But the Reaper is seventy five percent of what I use. Yeah, I use some of the Pro Acryl too. I really really like their line. Yep, you guys Pro aren't Acryl. into army painters. Nice. No army. Painter. I actually really really love um, the speed paints by. 
Army, it was an army painter that does this yeah painting. i got yeah. those okay oh my gosh i love them and like everyone was complaining that they get reactivated when you get them wet but i'm a, I'm a watercolor artist traditionally so it does You're exactly what i want it to do <laughs> i'm like yes i can just reactivate it and like add more stuff and it, it does what i like so i know that it's not everybody's coming to you but i i definitely like it i've heard a lot of good things about their their speed paint set okay the cool. commercials are really good <laughs> uh question from patrick canadian gamer fire water wind transparent figures like elementals and stuff uh, or, or how do you paint those? Um, well, Reaper has like a set of clears mm -hmm. um, that are really good for that. I don't know if other people have other suggestions, but um, yeah, the clears I, are incredible for that kind of stuff. I actually have a different suggestion for that. Uh, print them in clear and use uh, actually the speed paints we were just talking about. Okay. And just uh, wash them down real quick. And it, uh, because that's what I did for those uh, crystals when I was doing those uh, draw. Yeah. And I tried the washes, but they were kind of light. And I found the speed paints yeah. actually worked a lot better for that. Yeah, they do have a lot of pigment in them. I haven't tried them personally on a, on clear, so I wasn't sure. But I could see it definitely. Yeah, you can them. wash with them. They work great. I uh, just, you know, have another thing you know, with you to like a little sponge or something to thin them down in places. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you for those answers. Another question came, a direct message. Is there a particular paint thinning ratio and PSI settings for airbrushing mini or larger terrain projects? Uh, 25 PS, 20 to 25 PSI. And I always thin uh, two drops of paint and one drop of water. That's okay. what I do. Okay. Bill, use the airbrush. I try to stick with uh, whatever thinner the paint recommends. Okay. Uh, because I found out not that long ago that acrylic doesn't necessarily mean everyone's acrylic's the same. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll stick with it. But uh, also the uh, the Vallejo Air model air stuff is great. It doesn't really require much uh, thinning at all. Excellent. I use Vallejo for uh, airbrush when I use it as well, mostly because it's cheap. Like you can just dump the stuff in there. And then uh, as far as printing terrain, uh, the PSI, the best PSI is as high as it'll go. Okay. Otherwise, uh, Color Max, uh, I actually will uh, airbrush off a, a giant California air compressor um, just because the small ones just don't give enough of to like give me the coverage I want for like terrain stuff. So I mean, really, with like airbrushing terrain, you're looking for something that's basically like half a half or maybe twenty five percent of a can of spray paint because you really want to like cover large areas quickly. You don't want like some little details fiddling out, um, like you would with a mini or something. So it's really a different. I'm pulling the needle all the time and just letting it fly out. Patrick said, do you need distilled water or normal tap water is fine? I use distilled. <laughs> distilled. There you go. Distilled. Awesome. I got a, uh, what I like to do is just leave my uh, airbrushes and a pile of acrylic and let it harden. And what you do is uh, you dump it in Windex and you can pull all that stuff off. Excellent. So always keep the uh, Windex around and, uh, Good questions so far. Very good questions from the audience. If anyone wants to know the wrong way to do something and how to fix it, <laughs> I'm here to because <laughs> you've been through so handle much. All those questions. <laughs> First, I'm trying to say how to get paint transparent minis. It feels like I'm removing the whole point of transparency above a mini by painting over it. Yeah, um, understandable. Understandable, uh, but yeah, you know, there's some there's some things. Those quick those quick paints seem to be the way the idea to go with it. Here's a little piece I want to show from Bill. I want to show you the 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 technical genius behind this. I think this is a scratch print piece, correct? Technical genius. Oh. Scratch piece. Uh, that was uh, one of the standing stones that Jeremy had. Oh, okay. I just uh, modif I added the base uh, or modified the base, hollowed it out, and added the light to it. 
So that was uh, I was inspired by the Witcher three games with the uh, the power up areas. Figured out oh, let's uh, so I filled oh, it uh, cool. with hot glue and resin just so it would diffuse the light. There you go. That looks so awesome. Cool. Just to add it on a little bit to it and wired it up and boom. Yeah. Actually, that that leads me to a question. Please. Uh, so Christine has a random floating leg behind her right now. Yes, oh, the husband, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, ask. So my question is, all of all the the media that has come out this year, and there's been quite a bit that's made a splash. What have you personally found inspiring, and why? That's great. Ooh. Uh, media? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, movies or TV shows or video games or, you know, music, whatever kind of media that, you, uh, that has really the, had an impact. The Witcher stuff for me. I love, I love that semi gothic fantasy look. Yeah, that, that really, uh, and Wheel of Time, the last two seasons has been good too. I love the the mix of cultural architecture types that they put together. Uh, yes, to, I was actually just talking about that when we were watching it through the day. I was like, it's kind of Turkish, but also kind of Greek, and like. <laughs> and there's a little a splash of European and, and Asia mixed in, so it's very uh, it's very mixed. And the fashion and the architecture is very different. It's it's a neat it's a neat mix. Fantastic. Yeah, I like they they changed their lead actor, right? I haven't watched it since they changed it to. Um, yeah, it didn't bother me at all. Liam. I didn't even notice. Oh really? Oh really? The Witcher. Well, that's that'll be next next season. Oh, that's next season. Yeah, so that's it's... next season. Yeah, it was, oh, it was the Henry season Cable's season last season. On. Was this one? Oh well, that explains why I didn't notice. That's awesome. I guess I, I heard about it, but I guess the change was a year out. I just assumed it was like an, an immediate thing or something. That's I was awesome. Like, Man, I can't even tell the difference. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> that's so good. The, uh, Hollywood's amazing. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh, uh, the man. other thing that's really been big the last year or so, or a lot this year, is the, the grim dark paint jobs. Everything is a little darker, a little drabber, a little more gothic. Uh, that's that's kind of a, a neat, especially for terrain. Uh, if think colors aren't as vibrant, uh, it's a little mu more muted. So it's very Plathuhu, very Victorian kind of uh, dark Gothic look. It's it's uh, I like that as well. That's awesome, man. I can't even I can't even think of like uh, I get we get we can all get inspiration from weird things, right? I love throwing political commentary into the games, but like with innuendos, right? I'll mix up a name or I'll do something, you know. I'll see something on a TV show. Uh, I've been late night when I can't sleep. I've been rewatching Supernatural, and there's only 15 freaking seasons of it, right? So that's gonna take actually me a while. never yeah, watched that. Stuff in there. Yeah, I never watched that when it was like new, and right. I recently just started watching it. Um, it's on Netflix. So I'm I'm kind of like a a newbie to Supernatural. I've only seen the first couple of episodes now, but it's been really interesting. Yeah, it's it's really good. Like I said, they did 15 seasons of it. There's so many actors, like Felicia Day's in it, and uh, the guy who's Booger from Revenge of the Nerds, he's a big role in it <laughs> later on. So you got so many big name people in it. It's really it's really cool. I get some inspiration from there. Darling, Mike Come on, the darling. Yeah. Darling, no Barbie movie? Come on. <laughs> you get the pink from the door now. <laughs> I saw that movie. I thought that was really good. I think my inspiration awesome. as of late uh, has not really been from... I've been pulling from the past because I've been doing these dragons. And uh, I've been I've been looking at a lot of Larry Elmore dragons as I've been doing them. That's yeah. been a huge inspiration for me on these. And then uh, Patrick... Canadian ancient gamer sent me um, the Draco Nomicon. So I've been reading through that and looking at the images there. So that's been really inspiring uh, to be able to look in and see the like mood of each dragon and what they do and uh, their habitats. 
uh, has really been influencing uh, my paint jobs on that. So that's been really cool. So for me, I'm reaching into the past, which is really common for me. I don't watch a lot of new mainstream stuff, nor do I listen to a lot of mainstream or, or newer things. Uh, I kind of exist in my little bubble, uh, primarily like 60s, 70s. <laughs> that's okay. It's, you know, why, that's why Molly Hatchet is so popular. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Elmore will never stop being inspiring. So oh, yeah, sure. for sure. Him and him and Errol Otis, man. It's my fave. I'm about to unset, uh, uh, upset you, darling. I believe mm. last year was Larry Elmore's last Gary Con. That's what I heard. I was I was really sad about that. They may convince him because it's the 50th anniversary. I'm not sure, but like that's what i'm hoping for he just hang, he'll just <laughs> hang out he'll just hang out in the main bar in front of the fireplace in the one spot and him and Alyssa faden and kafir was there and uh, you know uh, uh, and everyone's just hanging out just drinking and talking you know at, at night it's really cool and that's just why like, is it his last gary con is he age just, yeah, age that's yeah, what i thought yeah, yeah. that's so, a shame he had a stroke a long time ago too yeah I yeah, just, was his painting style drastically changed after his stroke. Yeah. You can tell his dragons from like his Dragonlance art to ten years later art, they look totally different. Yeah. And it's just his his art change. Because he had to re he talked about it when we had him on stream. He had to reteach himself how to paint because he couldn't paint the way he did prior to the stroke. Wow. It was uh it was a really interesting art, uh, interview when he was on. Yeah, it's one of, that was one of our most popular Legends of Lore of all time when we had him on. It was fantastic. Um, he also, every year for the fundraiser, has given six prints of my choosing, whatever I want, signed uh, from his uh, collection. You know, He'll print them out, and his wife will print them out. He'll sign them, and he sends them off. And they're giveaways every year for the fundraiser. And, you know, same thing will happen this year, too. So we're still working on the title for that. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. Wonderful artist. I, just Awesome. Jay, do you ever think about doing like a compilation of like all the people from back then that you've had on and kind of like packaging it somehow? Do you mean like taking the YouTube, splitting it all up, cutting them all into pieces and just have a, a, a compilation of all the interviews? Yeah. Uh, if I, I'm not a video e a editor. Um, oh, I see. I, I would love to do it. But uh, it, once again, uh, um, if I if I do that instead of writing uh, the, the Free State of Altamore Bark set, Stephen Schultz going to kill me. Right. Yeah. So I, I got to <laughs> my spare time is uh, is that that's sure. what, you know, along with all the other stuff going on. And when I go to four streams in a week instead of three with all the work stuff, it's just my gosh, there's, I haven't even, even started the adventure for Thursday night with Bill and Bill and the crew. I haven't well, started it. Get started. Yeah, thanks. You sound like Wayne now, man. So, uh, all right. What are you waiting for? Yes. Yeah, darling. Um, I don't know if you'd be interested in this, but I know that uh, Andy Peeper is just finished sculpting all of the dragons for the Dark Sword Miniatures line, and they're all inspired by old Dragon Lance, Larry Elmore drawings. Um, and he's like, He's one of those very old school gamers that really wanted to stay true to the source material as much as possible. So I think yeah. you'd, you'd probably get a kick out of seeing those. That would be like, really cool. Yeah. All the box art yeah, is dark by stuff is Aaron Lovejoy. And really nice. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I That's that's my bread and butter, man. Dark Souls is still all metal too, right? They never went to uh, plastic. Uh, yeah, that's... they're still metal, although they did buy a really extensive STL library. I don't know if he's distributing them yet, but I know that they were talking about it. You can you can get them uh, on their on the site. Oh, the STLs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey Jay, I need five. I'll be right back. Sure, no problem. Okay. So, should I tell that secret, Bill? About Dark Sword. It depends on what the secret is. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know, maybe. Back in the day, um, that was our first choice for a, a mini sponsor. But yeah, they're 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 pretty boutique though. They're still relatively small and and uh, we didn't get far. And then Reaper was more than yeah. We love both, but 
dark, dark, we had a lot of dark sword minis. But this is well before three D printing was around, right? So and right, yeah. we loved everything metal, metal minis. Hey, metal darling, minis. there's the link to uh, dark sword stuff. Yeah, They're really good. Yeah, dark, uh, dark yeah, sword. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not some, already uh, there looking at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and Christine has some stuff on that site as well. Yes, yeah, she does. Nice. Play artist. Dark, and dark yeah, sword. I, work, I work for them sometimes. I I do a lot of their Critterkin they, uh, stuff. They got a lot of Game of Thrones too, stuff on there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They are the only authorized for well. Uh, Fire nice. They too. share the authorization yes, with Full Mini or not for the board for the uh, miniatures game, but they do all the design work for it. I know Darling's got to go shortly because she has a game, correct? Darling? I don't. I don't. Oh! Game Cancel Night. One of our players oh. is sick. So I'm sorry. Now I gotta I'm find... here. Now you're stuck with me. That's good. That's good. Because <laughs> I got to figure out who I'm going to freaking raid into tonight, too. So that, that's awesome. All right. Look, here's something uh, Christine uh, gave to me. We'll talk about future works, maybe, coming up now. Here we go. I got it on here. So talk about. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, Jeez, Jed, I'm not it's Christine. They look great, but I'm not printing it in the painting them for Jay. That's okay. Because <laughs> I'll um, have to fight them. Yeah. So these are a couple of minis I'm working on for our set for next month. Uh, these going to be the the flaming skeletal legion that serves the Wicker Man. And, oh, I love it. Yeah. But it's definitely like a like you said a a grim dark take. Not my usual whimsical characters. Uh, definitely trying to dig deep and, and get some of that grit in there. <laughs> Bill, let's get all the Wicker Men and all these and get them ready for Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, get them I off. Well, actually, I have two of Christine's. Uh, they're, uh, they're done in 15 minutes. I have two of her sca old scarecrows on the printer right oh, now. Oh, great. Awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> When do you have? When did you have to get that done to be presented for October? Yeah, it's uh. So normally we're out. Uh, <laughs> for us, it's like two months, two, and that's pushing it. So I'll give you an example. As a joke, I, I don't know if this is a joke or not for all of you. I bought the uh, Tiamat, you know, uh, Mal car. I showed it on stream. The Reaper big miniature and i'm like yeah, hey, yeah i'm like bill can you print this for the fun can you uh, print this for the <laughs> fundraiser for next year <laughs> and he's oh, like no <laughs> he's like I, I won't be able to do anything else and he's right so there I mean, was a challenge going around for a while who could paint that with a <laughs> size zero brush oh my gosh oh my god <laughs> yeah it was pretty fun there was a, pe a couple of people that actually did it but <laughs> oh, that's insane I, and you know uh, that's just I can't even imagine the hours that that thing would take to print to paint. So I I got it in the box. It's just sitting there, and that's gonna probably sit there. But it's cool. We I'd have say if one. you were gonna ask me of a, a miniature that's not out there that I would love to see somebody do, would be an elven dog, the Kushi. I have oh. never seen a miniature for an elven dog. Yeah, it's true. We I didn't we even used... know that was a thing. Yeah, it's called a Kushi. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love. In fact, we have a uh, Monster Manual Two, the yeah. Kushi. Here, let me bring it up. If I knew that that was a thing, I would have sculpted one for my Wood Elf set that I just did this summer. I did a. Because there's Elven so cats as well like too, a... if I remember. Yeah, there are Elven cats too, but the. I gave her a, a magic cat, like an elf kind of let cat. Let me see if I so... can go. For... Monster Manual but Two. But it look kind of reminds me of a quiche hound, uh, but they're like soup. They're not big dogs, but super dense, and they have an upward turned, uh, curled tail. Of course. It one second, oh, I'm talking to myself, everyone. I apologize. <laughs> well, I do. It's under C. Well, are we under... not supposed to talk to ourselves? Well, I, I always do, uh, Jeremy. You know that. I'm. Uh... Is it under yeah. C or D? I forget. It's under C, I believe. I, I don't. Here we go. I got to I gotta go to the reference book. It's under. There it is. It's in D. It's under C. No, it's under C. It's Cushy, Elven Dog. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yep. It kind of looks like a raccoon. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think uh, you could take anyone could take creative license on that one. But yeah, Cushy or Elven Dog, found mostly only in uh, widows or are, are frequented by elves. Uh, Cushy moves quickly. Wow, it's even got a twenty-one inch movement rate. Holy jeez! It's wow. the size of the largest common dog, so it's only man size. So it's like uh, Saint Bernard size, right? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's about, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I might have to add that one to my list. Okay. Cool idea, Jay, though. I, I need to use the restroom real Go quick. Go for I'll it, Mike. Sure. Awesome. Good idea on that, uh, Bill. Something we don't have out there. All righty. Uh, so, darling, what's what do you got? Uh, we we saw what Christine's working on there for October. We got yeah, uh, just doing the the Blue Dragon Commission. Yeah, so I'm doing the Blue Dragon. I don't think I'll have too incredibly uh, much longer on him, but then I'll be starting uh, a big Vecna bust. That I mean, it's it's pretty sizable. I think it's yay big, but it's just shoulders up bust of. Vecna and I'll get to play with some uh some more texture stuff, which is what I really like to do. I like to do a lot of terrain and texture stuff. It's super fun to play with. So and that you have a, okay. you have like fake blood uh materials that you like to do? Um, so I have where is it? I've got like a, a Vallejo um you do these special effects paints um so these are really cool there there's like a dry br blood and a fresh blood and then i have uhu glue to put down so you can do like slime and techniques like that and then I, paint the blood i over just heard about that it. for the first time from mike the other day never never aware of it I just started experimenting with it because um, I still have to finish uh, Craven Moorcock, which is my my beholder that looks extraordinarily phallic. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> look, the the chat named him. There were a couple ideas thrown out there, and we landed on uh, Craven Moorcock. Uh, I've got him right here next to me. I don't know how well you'll be able to see him. On cam, if my cam doesn't. Does a yeah, movie he... come with that, or is <laughs> yeah, uh, he's he's hilarious. So he's he's doing the. I don't think I know how to pronounce it very correctly because uh, I don't really know a lot of so, so anime terms. But he's doing the awago face, the like tongue out, eyeballs rolled up in his head, and then he actually you can't see it on cam so well, but he has a little poopy butthole. Oh, um, so good. he's the whole package of gross. Wow. But I got the uhu glue to experiment. And he's going to be my first experiment with him to make everything really slimy and uh, not necessarily saliva, but another substance that would go along with his phallic yeah. nature. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so he was he was a really fun like paint job that I did. Uh, he's hack and slash minis uh, did him. Uh, so, yeah, he's he's been fun. But the Uhu glue is fun. Bill, I would say if you're going to try it out don't do it directly on your model at first play around with it on some like junk model or something because if you get it wrong and you try to peel it back off before it dries it will peel the paint with it i learned that yeah. the hard way i have to go back in and and actually fix little craven <laughs> so uh can i bust your stones darling <laughs> Of course you can. You always, you always yell at me. Look at him putting it in front of the hand. You're just doing what I do all the time on the. Yeah, on but my game. camera wasn't. I forgot that I had to turn off autofocus on my camera because it was blurring out and being weird. <laughs> exactly. So now focus. You know what, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I got that brand new camera though. That new camera is awesome. That I'll see you in March, Jay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Physical violence coming. It'll be fun. No, come on. We're gonna have a blast. So if you all hey. don't know. <laughs> You all don't know, Darling and Bones and Myriad and Mandy are playing with Eric Mona and two open seats for a Slav Squad Squad game at GaryCon. So. Mm -hmm. This I is going to be the day of too. reckoning for you. Yes, it's going to be <laughs> awesome. The uh, ultimate experience in emotional terrorism for Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You're hoping to get one of those seats, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, hey. If you, you got a gold badge, you got a shot. So, um, yeah, because uh, I, I don't know how many are going to be open for the uh, diamond and platinum ones. And, uh, you know. It, well, I think uh, Jeff did get a gold badge, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, you're going to have to have Jeff a gold badge. Jeff does have a gold to badge. Get a seat. You're going to have to have a gold <laughs> yeah. badge to get one of the two seats. And there's two seats open for Ed Greenwood's game, too. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, open seat. Yep, there is two. All right. So, um Mike, what do you got? Uh, what do you got rolling here in the uh, coming up next couple months? 
Uh, just like I said, this weekend is uh, Disney Con. Yep, that's huge. Um, uh, really, nothing else. <laughs> I really can't, really can't say that I've got much after that. Uh, that's taken a lot of planning and and putting together. Um, but it just does. building, building up my, building back up my Etsy. I've sold a lot of stuff off of it, so I want to get back to over a hundred pieces on that. So I'll be doing a lot of that and uh, just working on the stream, really uh, trying to improve it and um, uh, advertise it a little bit more. Uh, I've been slacking on on doing any of, of my social media lately. So, like I said, I've missed a few streams and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, just trying to get back in the saddle and um, do better. Please take a is, lot of pics. Is for- that... Is Christmas time like a big rush for you in terms of like commissions or or like getting pieces ready for gifts and stuff? Uh, Christmas is it. It depends. I mean, uh, commissions have been slow lately. I don't I don't know what's going on, but uh, summertime, it's usually a little bit slower, but um, uh, they should pick up before Christmas. I, I do do a lot of personal things for people for Christmas, uh, personal minis and stuff like that. So it is it is a busy time for me. But, um, well, so I'm not expecting really uh, to be that busy this year. Because like I said, it's uh, commissions have slowed down a little bit for me. And um, I'm just really just going to concentrate on my Etsy and uh, go from there. Not that I'm going to refuse any commissions, <laughs> but, uh, sure. uh, you know, it's just right now, it's just been a little slow. So hopping back to cons, I want to show something and share it with all of you on how proud I am of the community. Here is the schedule of events for Virtual Graycon. And usually when this is the ticket page, uh, let's not count the seminars. One Ghost of Saltmarsh has one seat. Blade Star has one seat. This uh, Greg Reborn only has one seat. Child of the Apple has one seat. And then there's this one game, Brunch in the Dining Earth, that's four. Ghost of Saltmarsh has one seat. Everything else is sold out. Every single game. Wow, that's, that's crazy. All but six games are sold out events, which is unbelievable. So thank you. Really, really appreciate it appreciate Congratulations. All, all yeah it's just gonna be it's gonna be a fun time what time is my time slot again jay noon friday noon to two friday oh okay but you're playing saturday night too right yeah 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 i'll have to take a look at that uh and verify but i think it's noon to two friday yep so i just wanted to share that with everyone uh that's coming up in a couple weekends so Jeremy, what's going on, man? What, what do we got going on in the future, next couple weeks, next couple months? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to, as far as like creatively, yeah. I guess uh, I'm going to see if I can get some dividends off of doing this Underdark stuff and just do some uh, regular up top stuff. I got some ideas about doing some uh, functional timber frame houses that are a little bit larger than other people have been doing. I love that. Yeah, so I, I'm hoping uh, just to kind of dial in, uh, try to, I don't know, like a lot of times I get too much into like over designing things for my own entertainment. And so uh, I want to try to focus on making things easy to print and sort of snap together and see if that, uh, you know, helps uh, make things uh, grow. I know it won't make things worse, so... <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, a lot of people. I, are, I already tried to make things worse, and that didn't work. So I'm going to try to go the other <laughs> way now. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm on your Instagram. Look, I mean, these are awesome. You just got to figure out. Wow. Yeah, yeah. This is part of the the dark elf, uh, you know, under dark set. Yeah. That's too cool. Yeah, yeah, he's got one picture on there. It's the full city's built out. Which yeah. I mean, it's an entirely yeah. immersive. This one. Setup. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, and you that's have the one with the the leg, yeah, not the dark yep. one, but like yeah, that that shows it okay. Yeah, just a little minor work here, 
uh, as yeah. you can <clears throat> yeah seven months of work on the table there yeah absolutely and, uh, just no. noting knowing that uh, so what are the posts that you got for these uh for the stalagmites um part uh, uh stalagmite 2 part d is too large for a 220 by 220 print bed please fix it okay that's about it <laughs> Yeah, uh, and also the. I mean, the people people enjoy the stuff, you know, and I think uh, you know making sure that at least half of it could work above ground probably helps. Oh yeah, we utilize a lot our our stuff. There's the there's the part of the that ta yeah. the system that we're we're using above ground. Uh, yeah, it works above ground perfectly. Um, I kept it a little bit Egyptian. I figured maybe at least half of it could work for like Zentrium Keep or. Uh, you know, some other thing that that's the only thing that kind of came to mind. Um, you know, that moon, moon sea. Am I saying that right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, the plastic post, though, that causes this oh, that was, uh, stand. Yeah. Where, where did I? Yeah. Those are donut stands. They're called donut stands. It's like okay. the community again. Um, I'm so glad. Everyone else knows more than me. Otherwise, I wouldn't know anything. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm always thrilled to like just have people tell me exactly what to use. And uh, I was about three quarters of the way through designing these things when someone they must use them for airships a lot of times or something. That makes sense. But someone uh, suggested them, and they were like actually like only ten bucks for like eight of them, and they oh, were cool. like, super sturdy, like not even hollow plastic they're like solid acrylic uh, and then they screw into the base and they send you that and they even send you little stickers for like spacers on the bottom you know so they don't uh so they're not wobbly cool uh feet i guess you call them feet um and then you put holes in them reverse so that they fit right in yeah and wow. uh in the print you know i thought about pulling out the scroll saw and even cutting down the bases you know since i have like the uh bridge is kind of halfway holding it up anyways like those things will you can just toss them on the table and they'll stand up without the donut stands uh i designed all the tips so they like sort of come down at the same place all the way across okay um really so, and that the whole suggestion for that was actually another audience suggestion uh some guy uh i can't remember his name i think he's like a music teacher or something in australia anyways he said he wanted like uh set up for this stuff over you know for one of his games and i was like well that's great i've been thinking about that but i have no idea how to make that work for a gaming table so tell me exactly what to do and he gave me like uh three different ideas and um the one where it would like stand on its tips was like uh the most challenging one so i just did that and then you know three quarters of the way through the project someone came at me with the donut stand thing jeremy has some how-to videos too on 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 instagram if you want to take a look at those in the oh future yeah as well. Well, also on uh youtube i do like longer like 10 minute things and it's like just helpful for people to see how things go together because you're printing a bunch of parts and it's i'm sure it's confusing for people and they're not the ones who designed it. Um, awesome. And Jeremy, the statues aren't attached to the walls. You could even put your own statuary and everything. Oh, on yeah, there, right? that's the whole idea. Yeah, um, which I, I love that I, idea. I love that. I think my statues yeah. are better than everyone else's, but if they <laughs> want to use someone else's, yeah, there's those are like uh, 32 millimeter bases there, so you can literally blow something up and put whatever you want there. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And then they could just become like living statues and get down off the thing and fight. Yeah, if they players. want to do stone golems or something, you know. That'd be super cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought about doing a couple action poses on those, but then I was, um, I got all these things to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Christine said in chat, I want a Wood Elf City with that sort of design. Yeah, I did a Wood Elf years ago and then um it just didn't really take off and i might revisit that again after that because uh there's some 
you know, I kind of think of wood elves and like um, forest goblins as kind of having the same kind of uh, construction aesthetic. So I think, you know, I could do something with that that would. Uh, yeah. I, I love the sky bridges and stuff. Being able to have some sort of like, you know, Swiss Family Robinson tree sort houses. of treehouse yeah. thing would be really cool. Yeah, I did a, a whole uh, set of uh, platforms, you know, that are like elevated at two, three, one, two, three inches and, you know, like almost like mining platforms and there's like, uh, you know, you can go up and down them and those have been real popular, but I never uh, painted them up or advertised them very well, but that's like sort of the same thing where you kind of have something that can be zooming around over uh settlement underneath um, that's cool that's a good idea yeah i would uh, think that that you could take some inspiration from like platformer video games for stuff like that in terms of like how uh, a character might get from one place to another part of the map yeah i could look at that i've looked you know, the only video game that I found that, like, matched my aesthetic real tight was uh, Skyrim. Mm -hmm. So I, like, looked over at that stuff once in a while. Um, a lot of the video games are kind of, uh, like, you know, like the RTS strategy kind of look, like Spellforce or uh, Warcraft. They all kind of have the same. Very stylized, yeah. 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 And all the people who make terrain. Can't find it that looks like that make more money than me but you know you gotta yeah. you gotta stick to your guns sometimes you know i can't uh, i can't do uh warp deforms on everything and look at myself in the mirror the next day <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a joke that just we get sorry yeah i'm we're not doing any buck rogers <laughs> stuff there history prof i know you're joking no it's like a deformed thing on Z brush. Um, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, where I'm, you can put it in like very easily. Like people think it's like super awesome, but it takes like two seconds to basically uh, make something deformed or like slightly warping out oh. or warping in um, to sort of achieve that look that you see on a lot of those games when they put like buildings in there or whatever. I have the same mentality of about reposes there's a lot of sculptures oh, sure. that yeah. do like reposes <laughs> and they make a yeah. lot more money than me making whole armies of 10 guys but i just can't yeah. bring myself to do it <laughs> yeah i see it they probably wouldn't kill you to do a few though you know well these uh -huh. skeletons are kind of like that i yeah they're like they're reposed from the same z sphere rig but i'm sculpting the bones new every time so oh so you use the Z sphere function for doing your poses? Uh yeah, I do that for all of my characters actually. That's I awesome. build huh. a skeleton and then uh pose it with Z spheres, which I know is it's kind of like an antiquated uh technique now, I guess, but I find it much, much more satisfying and rewarding huh. than mask and move. <laughs> One well, one guy I used to talk to insisted on the mask and move just because, uh, um, you know, could, you could do the mask blur, which would cut down on uh, deformation at the uh, elbows or whatever. He I thought, just find that it doesn't have the same naturalistic muscle movement than if you just sculpt okay. it in oh. the pose. Huh. All right. I'll, I'll revisit it. I don't do a lot of mini stuff, you know, like I did a little bit for those statues but i downloaded some tutorials off of udemy you know because i was like oh, maybe if i can find time to like develop a work pipeline i could do a thing here and there you know yeah but it's uh you know it's a totally different thing to have a bunch of to have 50 pouches in a folder somewhere as opposed to 50 stones and beams you know it takes time to put that together and they don't pay you for it. <laughs> yeah. So as we wind down here, hopefully uh, we're having a really... Oh, Jay, I just started to get buzzed. We're like winding down. Oh, you're... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man! I just showed up. I just got here, <laughs> dude. It's two hours already. You believe that? No. <laughs> Hopefully, you're off tomorrow if you're getting buzzed now. No, I'll be fine. Because <laughs> uh... you know we don't want to hold everyone too late here. We're a little over time already, but um. Oh really? Yeah, All it's right. okay. It's okay. So, uh, right. to the audience. One last round of quick questions. Please throw that out Why share with you some things. Once again, I linked this. Use code Lord Gazumba on Moonlight Mini's uh, site for uh, uh, Shop Online in My Mini Factory, right? Um, yes. Lord Gazumba code 30% off tonight. So do it, please. Uh, part of the giveaways tonight include possibly the Haunt Weird Scriptorium, if you don't have that yet, in 3D print. I mean, the STLs, okay? Um, Heartwood Mine 2. Or the, uh, the Great Dark Elf Tower set, which uh, we love, we use all the time. Um, uh, that's one giveaway. Second giveaway is Mike Disney's Overgord print signed. Okay, right? Third, third and fourth giveaways are two $10 gift certificates to Troller Games. All right? So... Uh, holy crap. Yeah, isn't it great? Uh, th this show burned right through, which is fantastic. So, um, uh, any final questions? Any any other final questions from any of you to the rest of the um, uh, team here? Which um, hopefully everyone learned a little bit about each other and a little bit more about like some ideas. What what is that tube again, uh, darling? That you were showing that uh, for your uh, for your um, ooh who. Ooh -hoo. Yeah, Mike was Mike was just telling me about that because he'd used it on one of his really cool uh, Umber Hulks. Nice. I've been using Ooh Hoo for a long time. Yeah, I, I never heard of it. So I know who I can go to now when I have Ooh Hoo questions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mike, help! <laughs> any, any, anytime, anytime. That's awesome. I love working with it. It, it. You can create anything with it, really. Any anything stringy and gooey and bloody. It's a great, great, great medium. It's pretty cool. I actually had uh, viewers suggest it to me originally. Is how I found out about it, and I started looking into it. And I've I've done some experimenting with it, and it's it's pretty wild. It's weird stuff. <laughs> it does go bad after a while, though. So. It uh like um the glue in the tube. Don't okay. let it yeah, don't don't keep it for over like five, six years because it Okay. It, it just it still works glue wise, but when you add like paint to it or anything like that, it goos up and it doesn't uh it doesn't react like you want it to. Like it okay. uh, like when you go to stretch it, it'll snap back to where oh. you stretched it from. So at least in my experience, that's what's happened. All right. Do you actually mix paint into it, or do you oh, yeah. paint over top of it? Nope, I mix paint into it. I okay. mix paint into it. Uh, clears are best to use, but I mix regular paint into it, too, if you want, like, a more uh, thick blood look, you know, like a, a blackish red blood, then I would just mix straight straight red into it okay. with a little bit of black. But uh, yeah, it, it yeah. Works. I've only ever seen people like painting over top of it and not actually mixing into it. So it's it's nice to know that I can I can play around with that too. Yep, that's that's what I do. At least I always mix in in, in with it. Like I use a Tamiya Clear Red. Um, it's, okay. It comes in a little little round container. It looks like a little makeup container actually. And uh, they they make the best clears in the business. And if you if you get that, they make a clear green. They make a smoke. They make a, a red. And I think they have a blue and a yellow. I'm not sure though. But uh, the the red and the green are my favorite because the green you can make like alien blood or alien, alien slime or something like that. And the red, of course, is great for 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 blood. So I have I do have a question for for Mike and Go Bill. Um, what have you found is the best way to clean mold lines on plastic minis? Uh, what's that again? Repeat the question. What have you found? What have you found is the best way to clean mold lines on plastic minis? Well, a lot of people don't know this, but the other side of an Exacto knife yep. is it, it's got a uh, it's got a flat base to it, and some of them even have like a little area on it where you can use that 
for uh, trimming mold lines and flashing. Okay. So that's, but you got to be careful not to cut yourself, of course. But um, yeah, anything, anything like that, that's got an edge, because I found using an X-Acto knife or anything sharp like that, you can really damage your, uh, your miniature. It's really it's stressful. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. So, so you don't, you don't want to do that. Use, use the other side of the X-Acto knife. Just be careful. Okay. And you'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll see, experiment with it. You'll see though, you'll get a, a much nicer, cleaner uh, look than what you will using the sharp end. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's mold line tools, but essentially what Mike's saying is this, it's the same exact thing. It's just a flat with a yeah. mildly sharp edge on it, like the back of the X-Acto knife. And it, you're just pulling that smooth, that flat right along the mold line. And it just scrapes it flat to the other piece. So nice. it's, that's the cheapest tool. You probably already got a. I do. I do. There, I've, so. I've used that technique a little bit. I'm always looking for mold line technique. I fucking hate mold lines. I'm sure we all. Oh yeah. Mold lines mold are lines. a pain in the ass. It's a pain in my, I it's... actually got um this Tamaya extra thin. um What is this? It, it's glue. basically cement yeah. glue, but one Plastic of my viewers cement, yeah. suggested that for like really really delicate mold lines to actually use this to melt the plastic some and that has helped me a little bit too yeah yep yeah. that's that's a great 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 uh adhesive right there i i that's the only thing i use to do plastic actually is the to the regular tamia with the orange cap mm -hmm. and that to me or uh the uh the thin Mm -hmm. they're they're really really good but that thin really melts the plastic together yeah they, they're they're fused together when you use it so uh i had a i had bought like a cheap pack of sculpting tools probably from like hobby lobby or something like that but they ended up being way too big for sculpting miniatures which i didn't know at the time when i bought it but is really good for doing like terrain stuff and for cleaning mold lines because they have like all these kind of crazy shaped end tools that uh, are really useful for getting into crevices that may be difficult with other tools. The metal hey. tool or is it a plastic? It usually has like a cheap wooden handle with like metal end on the okay. tools. So a couple uh things in uh, hey you can go we'll just like take over <laughs> <laughs> jeremy's fired up so a couple things uh, naz says worst case ga games workshop have a mold line removing tool uh, some other people said uh um cuticle files also work well so as long as you're gentle there so um jewelry files work good too diamond files. files okay yeah Ooh, they, yeah they work great too yeah like, you just got a needle be... file set from like uh Harbor Freight or one of those kind of places, the little tiny needle files work great because they're they're very, very fine. Yep. And they're yep, small, they they're easy, in. small tools to work with. Very cool. Electric hot knife. I don't know about that there. <laughs> so uh, sanding sticks. I gotta I say, one of the sanding here. sticks. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah, say sanding sticks. Those are great. Sanding sticks are really, really good too. You get like a whole friggin' case of them for like, I don't know, five bucks or something. <laughs> Not even probably like a dollar for some of them, like the twenty packs and stuff. Yeah. Super cheap. So, so, Super cheap. So my my question is: Is the those lines worse than getting all the supports off of a off of a resin print mini, or is no. it about? Uh, I, I I'd say no, because if you do the supports right, you won't have any pits, or at least you won't see that many. Um, and you can easily sand the pits. Okay. Uh, that you know the little divots that you get from from 3D prints, but I in in my experience, 3D prints, uh, like I've I've had some bad ones, yes, but uh, most of the time, like all the stuff I've gotten from Signum, I I can't tell that they were 3D printed. They they there's no mold lines, there's no there's no support marks or anything like that. So it's really really good stuff. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. have been I spoiled on. Go ahead. I I just take them any of them now. I throw them in a pot, put them on the in the in the sink, and run hot water on them for a minute or two, and most of them just they peel right off. Oh, okay. I uh, leave minimal pocking or anything else like that, and before you cure them, that's the time to clean them up. Don't put them don't put them under the UV light until you've cleaned them. 
Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good advice. So, <laughs> so I have a little bit of experience with this because half of my company is selling 3D prints. Pretty nice. And, uh, we use, I, I do the um, alcohol, obviously, first, and then I put it into a, a hot water sonic cleaner for five minutes. And like you said, it's when the resin gets warmed up from the hot water, the the supports just fall off basically that there's almost no tension on it and it just comes off really clean and easy and then if you do have any little nubs or something left over those sanding sticks are perfect you just hit it a couple of times the little sanding stick and it's perfect but yeah i did have yeah, a friend use, that would use, like uh... cure it before she removed the supports and i was like what are you doing <laughs> and i use water water washable resin so even if I'm cleaning them and I and I leave a little scrape, I'll just use a, a little stiff miniature paintbrush, wet it, and rub it on the spot, and it it'll smooth those scratches out. And and so, I, yeah, really, they're they're not bad. Troy just said, "What about a Dremel tool in chat?" I think that's too abrasive. Correct for any of that stuff. Yeah, don't do that. Don't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't yeah, make make a really... you got problems. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. yeah you, you use I can see Troy. I can see you get, using that thing. <laughs> you can oh. get carried away with the Dremel and really damage your mini easily, very easily. So I don't use Dremels. Yeah, How do you? If find... I say don't use a Dremel, you know it's a really bad decision. <laughs> Because <laughs> normally I feel like that sounds great. But, uh, I got I got some resin supports. Uh, I can send you Jay to share uh, off the guy I got out in California via another person, okay. um, and they're almost like uh, that I sent out. That, and they're almost they end up printing like almost like a Brillo pad kind of pattern, and oh. they're barely attached, even though there's a ton of supports. Uh, the the uh whatever you would call it you know the amount of uh the support that goes into the model so i'll uh send that along to you so you can share that with people uh, if they're interested in that it's a good starting point like i kind of overdo it on my supports but other people can mess around and lower the support density to have even uh, more success with that uh, formula uh, I do have to say, okay. just as a public service announcement, if you are if you are going to take a Dremel tool to resin miniatures, please wear a mask. You don't want to be breathing oh, yeah. that in. Yeah, anymore. that's a yeah. good uh, point. Just just to put that out there. Yeah, good good point. Absolutely. It's, it, resin is toxic. Yeah. Uh, now it's just said. How do you find water resin versus IPA? Well, I why I use. Uh, uh, I would use water washable resin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use but, the water washable. Absolutely. Yep. Hey, Jay. I got it. Go ahead, Mike. It's fine. I got to get going. That's right, Mike. Mike. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. We'll do the giveaway. <laughs> I know we're running late. I'm sorry. Out. I'm sorry. Uh, I, yeah. Blame Jeremy. <laughs> you guys take care. It was see nice Mike. seeing you all. I will, I will give this away and let you know who won it. Okay. All right. All right. Have Bye, a good Mike. one, man. All right. See you, Mike. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, all, uh, uh, Mike probably has someone there, or uh, yeah. No, I've got people waiting on me. <laughs> oh, you should have told us that, man. All right. Thanks for hanging out, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Thanks. You got it. It's lovely to see you guys. Bye -bye. Great to see you, man. Too, yeah, Mike. I know we're running a little late, and uh, sorry about that, everyone. But some great questions. So, Bill, uh, finish that one on the. Uh, 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 we use the water solu soluble resin, correct? Yeah, that's why I use water soluble, just because it's e it's easy to clean up. Okay. You know, it's it's hot water. It is easy cleanup. However, it is uh, significantly more toxic than than regular resin. Is it? Yeah, it most is. people think that it's the opposite, that it's like safer because it's water soluble. And it's it's really not the case. It is much more toxic. So be careful. Wear your gloves. Wear your mask. Um, yeah. Yeah, there you go, guys. <laughs> so... That's good to know. Uh, so I guess maybe it's the ones that we print, but we have all those mounted orcs, right? Uh, they all seem very brittle. Is that is that the case with the water soluble over oh, the regular? It's, it's oh, a, yeah. Water soluble is much more brittle. Useless. Yeah. Okay. It breaks like in two seconds. 
you know they got that high speed resin coming out now too uh i picked up one of those printers and they were great um the only thing that happened was is i couldn't get any resin after i got my first one i had to i just had it finally mailed to me i had to wait like a month and a half to get more resin for it because it was all back ordered yeah um but uh they say it's six times faster and it is uh they have a weird um i don't remember what they're called but you know those uh pictures you look at and you can kind of move them around and then they change mm -hmm. as you look at them what are those called oh you know so the holographic pictures yeah. holographics yeah, yeah. the cup as a kid yeah the bat the vat is like uh almost like that like it's not clear anymore it's all uh blurry like that and the uh nice. The print bed, yeah, the the uh, resin for it is uh, much lower viscosity. So the print bed is just like jamming down on it, like just going nuts. Beam, 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 beam. And it like just prints it out like six times faster than what uh, than what we're used to on the old prints. So like it definitely works if you can find some resin. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. We've been trying some of that new Onyx and uh, mixing that into our normal blend uh, to try to get some more stability to it. Um, so far, it's definitely increased the, the structural stability slightly, but I'm not sure that it's worth it yet. <laughs> we got some more testing to do. What's the Onyx? I'm not Onyx familiar. is uh, Frozen's okay. like, mix-in uh, resin. Is it like what oh, they do when they yeah, yeah. when they mix like uh, bendable with like the regular ABS, or is it something else? It's kind of like that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, it's like a thick tar, black substance, mm -hmm. and it does not mix well at all. Like I had to sit there for fifteen minutes just mixing mm -hmm. the vat because it does not want to mix very well at all. Um, it seems like a lot of extra work for <laughs> a small game. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's made by Loctite specifically for miniatures, but it's a oh. it's like a hardening. They call it like a hardener, but it's basically Ooh. just to give it more structural stability. Hmm. Learn yeah, a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 But Maybe. we're always we're always looking to innovate and find new better resins, new better ways to produce. We want to make sure that people get the absolute best product we can put out. So. Yeah, you're trying to sell a durable product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, what a great discussion tonight. Awesome. Why don't we all, what, what would you like to all say in closing, uh, do some final shout outs. Uh, darling, why don't you hit us off, uh, lead us off on this. Yeah, I'm Darling Creepshow. You can find me all across the internet as Darling Creepshow. Um, and I'll be back to streaming tomorrow. We're going to be working on the Blue Dragons some more, so I'm pretty excited about that. Plus, we'll discuss where you'll see Darling next Saturday night. Yeah. And what's the name of your uh, beholder again? Oh, Craven Moorcock. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone know that when a Darling and Bones and all Myriad, they all get together with Ed Greenwood, it is magic. We're it's filthy. It's a free for all. It's Bunch a free of filthy <laughs> lads. <laughs> it is. And I just, <laughs> I don't get in trouble because I don't say anything. I just keep my mouth shut. Let them have at it. So that's awesome. Very cool. Well, Darling, thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me with all these lovely people. We got to do this uh, more than once a year. We got to start hitting them up like every six months or something, or, you know, we got to keep this thing rolling. Uh, there we go. Uh, Christine. Uh, yeah. I mean, thanks for having me of on course. here. I, I miss you guys. It feels like it's been way too long. It has been. Should, shouldn't let it go this long again. <laughs> We need to uh, we need to move you and your husband into a game with uh, Mike on you know, Saturday morning as well. So I've been doing a lot of those. It's just been, you know, we got to get you back in the game too because you have you know with your characters that would be good. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love that. Yeah. Um, Christine, yeah, you're not streaming anymore, right? You stopped in July. Uh, yeah. So we we moved to a new house this summer 
and immediately had to jump into renovations because I didn't have a working bathroom. Oh, okay. Um, oh. And then we spent the rest of the summer doing prep for Rebercon. So our time was just completely monopolized with the move and home renovations and Rebercon prep. So we just lost streaming off of the schedule this summer, uh, but we're trying to get back into it coming up this month and get back into a normal routine. And we usually try to stream on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, Tuesdays Fridays. and Fridays. Um, and we're going to try to get back to doing that now that we're a little more settled. Excellent. Well, congratulations on your uh, new house, hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy. You guys got little ones too, don't you? Yeah, yeah we have a mm -hmm. six-year-old and a seven-year-old. Um, wow, did so they like go in the bathroom outside? <laughs> no. My my daughter was so upset. She was like, Mommy, I never want to pee outside ever again. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, oh my know. gosh, that's hysterical. Well, I would stop streaming for that too. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's all yeah. good now though. Yes, yes, we have a five thousand dollar new bathroom and nice. everything. <laughs> everything is great. Well, Jeremy, what are you downing, man? I gotta know. Oh, um, Woodford Reserve. No, uh, it's uh, usually it's just like a dark beer, like in it, oh, or okay. something like that, and then okay. I dump some uh, whiskey in there, <laughs> um, which is uh, doubling it up trick i learned uh when i used to have vietnam friends that were still alive but uh <laughs> you know they would usually do vodka and do uh cobra 45s or something oh my gosh this is this is kind of the upgraded version of that uh, not the cobra oh my yeah <laughs> not the cobra <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised well, it's nice to meet other people who know what Cobra is. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I used to spend a lot of time with Cobra 40s and uh, what was Old Crow Whiskey. Oh, oh my gosh. The worst of the worst. Yeah. yeah. When I still lived in the city, we would go rooftop hopping oh, and drinking like a bunch of delinquents. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they made that for. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, I like the doc. I like the green label Woodford. It's got it's you know what's that the rye? Is that the rye one? Oh, it's cool. So, uh, Jeremy, any uh, closing remarks or thanks for coming on and being? Uh, 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 I'll be here tomorrow. I don't know if Jay will let me on. <laughs> tomorrow, I'm off on Mondays, man. Six o'clock. I'll be right here. <laughs> Uh, you never know, man. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're fire. Yeah, this is a this is a fired up version, which is good. Yeah, it's, it's good. I won't. I won't be here. I'm just joking. Yeah, that's okay though. But like I said, you and you and Darling get to meet at Gary Con coming up in a couple months. So yeah, I guess you got to figure out what to do with me. Uh, and figure <laughs> bring out you a couple uh, Cobras. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, wait, wait, till, <laughs> wait. I'm too what? old. I got. It's got to be upscale stuff or. So We're going to sit you next to Davis Chenault and just have you guys can have at each other while you're <laughs> drinking because like that guy is a giggle as you saw him last uh, last uh, Wednesday on with uh, last Sunday on with Luke Gygax. Oh my gosh. We'll just I'll just let's sit you two down together at that back bar that we we take over. Curtis knows what I'm talking about. Right Curtis? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Double Rock and Ryan seven carlings. There you go yes. Curtis. Quote Animal House. Yeah, sounds good. I'm yeah. real awkward socially, so you'll need to do no, something out for uh, me. Everyone's awkward socially that goes to Gary Con. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Just gonna be a bunch of weirdos roaming around. Yeah, it's that's fine. It. It's gonna be. It's gonna be <laughs> awesome. Not, I'll be there nine days. So, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. Well, Jeremy, thanks for coming on and sharing everything, man. We're really excited. I can't wait. Uh, Bill's getting more stuff shortly. Yeah, <laughs> I got a, I got a box coming tomorrow. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's gonna be fantastic. More, more stuff. And we're he's gonna only use... got two forts on his painting table already. I guess. Yeah, a lot more can't hurt. A lot. And we we still got the Centrion stuff that got printed too. That has, oh you know, yeah, got two. Yeah, that's why, man. I know you yeah. guys got that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Bill, what do you got to say in closing here, man? Thank you. 
for coming on tonight. Here's Jeremy's small goblin fort. Yep. Just oh, finishing yeah. this up. Yeah, that's all. That's that's cool. That's gonna but, be. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just uh, Jeremy keeps making it, and I keep painting it. You know, and it, stuff looks great on the table. So, and uh, let's see here. Hold on, we got a little Christine. Uh, yeah, there you go. Scarecrow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, now if it's just uh, I just keep making them whatever whatever looks good. Whatever looks good, and whatever like, we're filling gaps now. Like you know, we come up with ideas. Oh, this would be good for you know. We don't have this or whatever, and that's why he brought up the Kushi. Uh, you know, a couple a couple miniatures. I, I don't, are, there aren't a lot of night. Am I missing? There aren't a lot of nice gargoyles printed out either. Are there? And I haven't matches. seen any. Yeah, that's another one I think that could really use some 3D, uh, some nice 3D prints or gargoyles. I got some plastic ones, but there's one I don't have any. Uh, we don't have any. There's a lot of real ones, scans of real ones, like the Notre Dame ones. Mm -hmm. uh, my mini factory, I know there's some guy out there who does a couple of them who do scans of everything. Like you can find some old Falcon A sculptures from the Rococo period and then... You know, uh, you know, I'm sure you can get some gargoyles on there too that are from uh, actual mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, because I always, I'm, I'm always short gargoyles when we when we play. It's one that just came to mind. All right, last call for everyone for the giveaways. Put them in in ten seconds. I'm going to start doing them. You must be on to claim, and you must tell me what you want. You want the STL compilation of your choice, one of three different ones, or do you want the Mike Disney print or, or ten Argus certificate controller games? All right, this is the one that, uh, you know, if you're overseas, you got to get with me on, on, on shipping costs on this. All right? So, thank you. Thank you for the follow. You can use the gargoyles from Raph of a Chardelon. Oh, interesting. Aren't they too small, though? They're, they're not the right scale, are they? Uh, uh, eat the surf. They're also um, already, uh, they're already, um, the ones I have, they're unpainted. I, that are painted because they're unpainted versions of the paint of the painted ones that came out in the 2000s. So, yeah, I probably have that right back there. On the, yeah, I have Wrath right there. All right, let me uh, let me close this out, everyone, and let's do the giveaways, and we'll uh, raid into someone. I think we're gonna raid into Winter Tales tonight, if that's makes sense for everyone. Closing it out. Here we go. They do, they do have some gargoyles. All right, well, I'll have to check. I just did a Reaper order just recently. All right, first winner, Lorcalon, you're up. Lorcalon, tell me what you want there. I know you got a 3D compilation. Uh, uh, I don't think you have a 3D printer. So um, next winner is 2000 Caesar. Next winner, Sam Weiss. Let's make sure they're on. Yeah, I got you. I'll get you another. Uh, um, good, cool. Let me know, Caesar, what you want. Uh, uh, Lorcalon took a, a, a gift certificate. Uh, Sam, uh, do you want? Um, I don't think you have a three D printer. So, do you want the Mike Disney print or a gift certificate? What do you want, uh, Caesar? You're up next. Do you want the three um, D print compilation or a, a uh, the Mike Disney print? You tell me on that. All right, and then then Sam and the last winner is uh, Broomgale. So, you got it. Mike Disney print. I know I got your address. That'll go out tomorrow. That leaves uh, that leaves Sam and Broomgale. So, yeah, very cool. Sam, uh, you tell me if you want the 10 Argus certificate to uh, Troller Games or the Mike Disney print. Um, and then Broomgale, the same thing. 3D, you got it, Broomgale. What, do, you have the, uh, do you have them all? Let me know. Uh, and put your email address if I don't have it. Put your email address in Whisper, and uh, I, I can link it, link you the Dropbox. I already got set up for it. So of course, thank you all, all four, and Mike, thank you so very much. Uh, if you don't know where to follow them, uh, if they're on uh, Twitch, there's Mike, there is Darling. Uh, here's Moonlight Mini shout out link for everything to her site. And uh, here is Build a Master Crafter's stuff on Instagram and also, lastly, Gamescape 3D's sites. Um, no Kickstarter going on right now. Of course! And uh, we'll see you all Wednesday night. We're going to start late on Wednesday. 
I uh, have a back to school night, which ends at eight. I'm going to get home as quickly as possible Wednesday night. But then Saturday's the best big thing I wanted to talk about. Tony Winslow Brill guest guesting from the from Two Drink Minimum, uh, Darling and Myriad and Mandy. Little Birds joining the group, kind of taking LJ's place. Um, uh, Bones is away on vacation. I think she's going to Boston, so she will not be available. So, uh, but Josh Pop will be here, and it's called the Misbegotten. So, very cool. I'm um, excited to play with Tony again. Yes, Tony. Tony's got a very stuck up, uh, snooty character. So I uh, love that. Yeah, it'll be good because you'll have. Uh, we got three. There's no humans at the party. Three half elves, a uh, half orc. Um, what am I missing? A halfling. A halfling. And a halfling. A, Jay, a, a, you forgetting me? No, a halfling, <laughs> and, and Josh is a solar elf. That's the one I was forgetting. So, yep. cheese, anyone? <laughs> Got that pocket cheese? Yes. That's how I'm going to soften Tony's character up and you know offer all my pocket cheese. That's it. <laughs> all of my halflings have their names are either cheese or bread. Mine is uh, Rosie <laughs> Applebottom. <Nice. Yes>. Rosemary <laughs> is her full name. So I went with all food, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't show it, but uh, I should have. But here, it's called uh, Thurs uh, Wednesday Nights to the Air in Greyhawk. Air-based stuff, aerial mounts, aerial fortresses, a lot of stuff that has to do with the air. Uh, and that'll be uh, uh, 8.30. My guess is 8.30, everyone, all right, uh, for, for, uh, for, for Wednesday. Uh, I should, if not, just sit tight. I'll be on as soon as I can, as soon as I get back from, from that. And then, uh, our normal game Thursday night. I don't know what we're doing yet. I think we're doing hard be regulars, Bill. So, Okey -doke. all right. Sounds good. All right. See you all soon. Let's, uh, let me, uh, close this out. Yeah. Raiding sure. into winner's tales. I think they're live. Robert Hartley's playing in the game. Um, so let's, let's, let's hit into winner's tales. Since Starling's not on. Oops. Ooh, that's okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be back next week with more Cyberpunk 2020. Awesome. Oh man, I'm gonna be right back screen. Well, I already cooked it. Alright. Five, four, three, two, one. See you Wednesday. Have a good night. Alright. Went. Yep. Awesome. Okay, shut this down. Awesome.